Admajid Ali retired from our DIG operations. He's here personally. We have DIG Afis Inoa, MNI. He's here personally. We have DIG Bode Adeyinka Adeleke, MNI, former Deputy Special of Police Operations. He's here personally. I want to welcome the Special Assistant and, of course, Consultant to the Nigerian Police Force and Police Housing Scheme. Your Excellency, next week again we have another event, the first of its kind, the Nigerian Police Housing Summit, put together by the Inspector General of Police to address our challenges, particularly in the areas of accommodation facilities for our officers. We have the man that has been helping us, Mr. Kim Ogunero. Is there personally in the house? Let me welcome the mother of the Nigerian Police Force, the first wife in the Nigerian Police family, the wife of the Inspector General of Police and President Police Officers' Wives Association, very seated close to the Inspector General of Police, Mrs. Elizabeth Egbetoko. Can we please appreciate this woman? I know the, this is the number one wife. I call her Powa Owan. Thank you, ma. We appreciate you. The National Chairman Police Committee Relations Committee, that committee that gives us support at all times across the length and breadth of this country, the chairman is Alaji Magaji or Lania. And other members of PCLC that are here, we welcome you. We want to welcome our partner and friend of the police, NDDC, led by the MD and CEO, Dr. Samuel Oboko. They are here with us. Our friends from other places, particularly the rep of the U.S. Ambassador, is here represented by our friend, Senior Advisor Sean J. Galvin, and other members of Diplomatic Corps that are here. We want to welcome you. Gentlemen of the press, we want to welcome you. This program is live on many stations. Please, some of you should be cautious of this. We are live. Mind what to say, mind what to do. So that they will not be calling you at home. What you are doing? We are alive. Thank you so much. On that note, let me say, leadership is not about being in charge. It's about taking care of those in your church. Simon Sinek, an English author. And that is why we say that when you have leadership, you should be able to make sure your followers do what is needful at the right time. And according to the words of the American lecturer, people work for money, but go the extra mile for recognition, praises, and reward. And that is why we have gathered here tonight to celebrate our men who have done well in all areas. It's the same time we say there's time for reward, there's time for punishment. If you do good, the IG will tell you, I will commend you. If you do bad, the IG will tell you, I will correct you not to do the wrong thing again. We're having this maiden event of awards and commendation night here today, and history is being made. On that note, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I want to invite to this podium respectfully the 22nd Indigenous Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the one I call the great mathematician, MPF01, Cicero of our time, IGP, Olukayode, Adiolu, Egbetokon, take the hover, Nigeria Police Medal for his remarks. We can do better for the Special General Police. Thank you, the IGP. Thank you, police band. Your Excellency, the special guest of honor, President Paul Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, ably represented by the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Kashim Shatima, GCON. The Senate President, Senator Godswill Akpabio, the Deputy Senate President, Senator Barao Jubrin, the Minister of Police Affairs, 
Senator Ibrahim Gedam, the Minister of State Police Affairs, on Imam Suleiman Ibrahim, representatives of ministers of FCT, Chairman, State Committee on Police Affairs, Senator Abdul Hamid Malam Madori Ahmed. Chairman, Senate Committee, NDDC, Senator Asuku Epeyong. Chairman, House Committee on Police Affairs, Honorable Maki Yalema. Chairman, Police Service Commission, Dr. Solomon Arase, IGP retired. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja. Chief of NAFA Staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, ably represented. Chief of Air Staff, Air Masha Hazan Abubakar, ably represented. Retired Inspectors General of Police who are here present, I recognize you, sir. Retired IGP Sunday Hidero. Retired IGP Mike Mbama Okiro. Retired IGP Suleiman Abba, and my immediate past boss, retired IGP Yusman Akali Baba, the Chief of Defense Intelligence, Major General E.A. Undiadeye, heads of other security agencies who are here present, I recognize you, the CG Customs, Wali Adeniye, the Chairman EFCC, Mr. Ola Olukoyede, my wife, the Power President, members of the Diplomatic Corps, representative of the U.S. Ambassador, Senior Advisor, Sean Gavin, the MDCEO, NDDC, Dr. Samuel Obuku, the Emir of Kano, and other royal fathers who are here present, I recognize retired Deputy Inspectors General of Police who are also here present. Retired DIG Abdul Majid Ali is here. Retired DIG Hafiz Inua is here. Retired DIG Bode Adeinka Deleke is also here. Thank you for coming. Distinguished invited guests, members of the Nigerian press, ladies and gentlemen. It is with joy and heartfelt gratitude that I welcome you to this historic occasion, the Medin Nigerian Police Commendations and Awards Ceremony. This event marks a significant milestone in our journey as Nigeria's foremost law enforcement agency. Today, we begin to formally recognize and reward the steadfast dedication of our officers who have consistently exceeded their duties to ensure the safety of our nation. In the last 94 years, the Nigeria police force, like its counterparts all over the world, has undergone transformations in form of function and fun in, in form and function, influencing its current structure and operations. Throughout its history, the human elements, our officers, have been crucial in fulfilling our core responsibilities, both nationally and on the global stage. Amongst us are the true unsung heroes of our nation, those who have tirelessly prioritized the country's interest over their own interest. Tragically, many have made the supreme sacrifice, while others have sustained permanent injuries in the line of duty. The initiation and assembly of this ceremony underscore our commitment to not only recognize but also honor the extraordinary achievements of our officers. In line with the ethical demands of the profession, these individuals have remained unsung. Their diligent efforts often go unnoticed, shrouded in the shadows and unrewarded amidst the formidable risk, immense challenges, temptations, and complexities of law enforcement in contemporary Nigeria. Today, 
We turn the spotlight on those who have set the highest standards of professionalism and bravery in their service to our nation. These officers, amidst a myriad of socioeconomic challenges, have exhibited exemplary strength of character, steadfast courage, and resilience. They have firmly upheld the sanctity of the rule of law and the protection of lives and property across the country. Facing adversities with valor, they have confronted danger directly and achieved boundless successes, selflessly risking their own safety for the safety of their fellow citizens. As we celebrate the valor and heroism of our officers today, we also recognize those who have maintained the highest ethical standards and served as exemplars of fidelity in their conduct and service to the nation. In a profession where integrity is critical, these awardees have demonstrated that honor and virtue transcend mere rhetoric, but guiding principles that should shape every of our actions and decisions. Similarly, recognition, commendation, and honor will be given to deserving officers who diligently carried out investigations and prosecutions whose meticulous attention to detail and unwavering pursuit of justice play crucial roles in our criminal justice system. Their efforts have brought offenders to justice, delivered closure to victims, and reinforced the rule of law, transforming justice from a mere concept into a tangible reality for all. At this inaugural ceremony, awards will be presented in 16 distinct categories including crime busting, cybercrime, community policing, investigation, gallantry, and integrity, culminating with the first with the Police Officer of the Year Award, designated for the officer deemed most exemplary among the awardees. We will also extend the IGP's commendations for either courage or merit to those who have performed exceptionally well, yet did not secure an award in their nominated categories, as determined by the award committee. Additionally, we will honor the memory of officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice with Postwoman's Award. Lastly, the Inspector General of Police Special Recognition Award will be given to individuals who have significantly contributed through their invaluable services and support to the current police administration and the maintenance of internal security in our country. While this event primarily celebrates the exemplary performances of our officers, many of whom are eminently qualified for awards, but cannot be accommodated in the award list for today, it is equally designed to inspire every member of the force to excel in their duties. This ceremony serves as a pregnant reminder that the efforts of our officers are both seen and valued. Let this also serve as a reassurance that the leadership of the force is deeply committed to the well-being of all members of the force as well as improved service delivery. As we honor the achievements of our distinguished officers today, I seize this opportunity to reaffirm our unwavering dedication to the principles of service integrity and professionalism that define our noble profession. I reaffirm our total commitment to ensuring a more secure Nigeria and to collaborating with other sister services to achieve this admirable objective. I urge every officer of the Nigerian Police Force to emulate the virtues demonstrated by our awardees, perseverance in adversity, determination in our pursuit of justice and compassion in our dealings with the public. Additionally, I pledge to the families of our fallen colleagues that we will diligently pursue justice for those responsible for their losses. This we are currently doing at the same speed with which we have pursued and concluded the processing of their due benefits. The checks for the insurance benefits will be presented to their nest of kings here today along with their postwoman's awards. Be rest assured that the sacrifices of your loved ones will never be forgotten, 
nor will their deaths be in vain. At this moment, I want to extend my deepest respect and appreciation to our special guest of honor today, His Excellency President Bola Metinobu GCFR, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Senator Kashim Shetima. Your Excellency, through your policy initiatives and actions, you have shown a profound commitment to the welfare of the officers and men of the Nigerian Police Force. We are deeply thankful for your support. We also extend our gratitude to the President of the Senate, His Excellency, Senator Godswill Akpabio, CON, the Supervising Minister, the Minister of Police Affairs, His Excellency Senator Dr. Ibrahim Gedam, MON, the Chairman of the Police Service Commission, IGP retired Dr. Solomon Arase, for their support and collaboration with the leadership of the force. My heartfelt thanks also go to all our distinguished guests who have taken time from their demanding schedules to grace us with their presence here today. Your support is highly valued and never taken for granted. In conclusion, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to all the recipients of today's commendations and awards. Your dedication, courage, and selfless, selflessness are truly inspiring. And your contributions to the Nigerian Police Force will be remembered and honored for many years. Thank you to every one of you. I wish you all divine protection as you travel back to your homes. Thank you. Welcome remarks there by the chief hosts of this evening's event. The very affable, the very personable, the very result-oriented Inspector General of Police, Kayo De Egbatukum, PhD, and PM. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, somebody once said that leadership is about service to others, not being served by others. I think we have seen those traits of leadership in the current Inspector General of Police. Can we please put our hands together for him one more time, ladies and gentlemen? Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is still the maiden edition of the Nigeria Police Awards and Commendations. In the course of this event, we've listened to several people who, of course, have been identified and recognized as guests at this event. That, of course, doesn't in any way negate all of those who have come from far and wide, different parts of this country and beyond, to come and witness history being made today. We're going to take some messages of goodwill, and I'm very sure that if all of the people here had an opportunity to speak, they would, of course, be able to relay the sentiments of gratitude that the police is giving to his men today, and, of course, to the admiration of the rest of us who are not members of the Nigerian Police Force, but who, of course, identify with something which is done and done well. We want to kindly appeal to those who are coming out for the um, goodwill messages to please ensure that they do their best to keep it within some reasonable amount of time so that we can accommodate other speakers. First, the chairman of the Police Service Commission, himself a former Inspector General of Police, his goodwill message will be the first on this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Solomon Arase, CFR. Please put your hands together for him as he comes up here for the purpose. Thank you. Your Excellency, the special guest of honor, here represented by the Vice President, GCOF, the Senate President, the Deputy Senate President. Let me align myself with the other, the protocol already established. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and privilege for me to be invited to join the August gathering this evening as we collectively recognize this group of finest officers of the Nigerian Police Force. I am humbled by the opportunity to present a goodwill message, share my thoughts, as well as register our collective appreciation and admir admiration for tonight's awardees. 
Although our words may appear cosmetic to some, but in actuality, it is an eloquent testament to hard work, commemorating one's commitment and dedication to duty, as well as memorizing one's contribution to humanity. All over the world, being a police officer is no easy, is no easy feat. The words of August Volume, a former police chief of California, elucidated the, the, the unraised expectation of the people from the police. He believes that the citizens expect police officers to have the courage of David, the strength of Samson, the patience of Job, the leadership of Moses, the kindness of the good Samaritan, the strategic training of Alexander, the faith of Daniel, the diplomacy of Lincoln, the tolerance of the capital of Nazareth, the wisdom of Solomon, and finally, an intimate knowledge of every branch of the natural, biological, or social sciences. So if he had all this, he may be a good police officer. So there is no doubt that these honorary police officers must have exhibited sterling qualities as highlighted by volume to merit this award tonight. I therefore offer my sincere congratulations to all of you. The plaques and certificates that will be presented to the recipients only symbolizes a token of the collective enthusiasm and appreciation of an institution for the dedicated self-sacrifice, self courage, and desire they have shown in making our country safer and better secured. I also extend one felicitation and appreciation to all the countless police officers who toil every day in virtual anonymity, whose duties may seem somewhat mundane and in relative geographical obscurity, whose day-to-day -day efforts have contributed immeasurable to our ensuring adequacy of security provisioning in Nigeria. The aggregation of the efforts of these awardees and that of the undramatic routine of the ordinary plundering police officer in every part of our dear country is fundamental to the relative peace and security enjoyed in our country today. I also salute the ingenuity of the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egwetoku, and his management team for this commendable step in recognizing and appreciating extraordinary efforts fits and exceptional performance of our police officers. The awards will only, would not only serve as a moral booster to these officers and spur them to even work harder, but also it will continue to serve as a source of motivation and an infectious encouragement to other police officers, accentuating the fact that hard work and acts of valor towards peace and stability of our country are not unchronicled and unappreciated. As an Inspector General of Police, I instituted a scholarship award and grant for brilliant children of inspectors and rank and file. To me, this will assist the police officers in the lower rung of the Nigerian police ladder who form the greater percentage of our field officers in training their children and eliciting their commitment and dedication to the police institution. Unfortunately, this noble initiative could not be continued by successive leadership of the force. Although in my private capacity through Solomon Arase Foundation, I have carried on with this scholarship scheme. It is my belief, however, that this scholarship initiative will have more extensive reach if anchored and carried on by the police force. I therefore urge the Inspector General of Police to find a way of revitalizing and sustaining the, this initiative as it, is, it will restore the hopes and faith of our junior officers in the Nigerian Police Force as an institution that cares and shows empathy to its personnel. Furthermore, it is important that setting quota of admission into POLAC and recruitment into the, into the police force is reserved for children of police officers as a way of ensuring that police officers replicate themselves. <laughs> replicate themselves in the police institution. 
as well as appreciating them for their efforts and commitment to peace and security in Nigeria. In conclusion, I salute Mr. President for his untiring efforts and commitment towards resolving the insecurity challenge in Nigeria by supporting the Nigerian police force, as well as the police service commission towards optimum functionality in the performance of the respective mandates of these critical institutions to our national security architecture. We are indeed most grateful, and I am optimistic and can assure you that the darkest hour is nearest to dawn. And in no distant time, we will attain the security aspirations and dreams of our people. I am sure that this type of recognition of achievements holds the potential to contribute towards individual and institutional performances and the effective functioning of Nigerian police force in a responsible and accountable way to the Nigerian people. Thank you and God bless. Recipients of the National Honor, the Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, recipients of the Nigeria Police Medal, the Fellow of the Defense College, the Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, and the 18th Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and currently Chairman of the Police Service Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please put your hands together for Dr. Solomon Arase. Thank you very much. The next in the series of the goodwill messages and of course the first PRO took time out to give appropriate recognition to each of these gentlemen who though they may have finished their tour of duties as head of Africa's largest police force still identify with the story the successes of the Nigeria police we're going to have one of them speak and present a good message on this occasion ladies and gentlemen the 13th inspector general of police IGP Sunday in the road retired please put your hands together for him as he comes up here to give a brief message of goodwill I'm very sure if we were to clap again he would not mind please give him another round of applause thank you very much The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, ably represented by His Excellency the Vice President Kashim Shetima, GCON, and other distinguished guests here present. I on behalf of the retired Inspector General of Police, wish to bring our message to this occasion. I want to observe that I'm not, uh, you are not like Dr. Arase, who has a prepared speech, but I've been asked to observe and note that the hallmark of policy is the ability to survive in chaos. And that the IG, Coyote, is on top of this situation. Because there are, there are a lot of chaos in this country, security-wise. But we're happy that he's on top of the situation. We, we also appreciate him for thinking out of the box in facilitating this occasion of award. It is a means of motivating the workforce. And we think uh, a lot of policemen watching this award will be motivated. We also want to think that um, the motivation should be carried forward in terms of promotion of these officers. 
because they have done so well, they should be rewarded tangibly. And that is why hard work will be encouraged in the force and others will be motivated. We congratulate the Inspector General of Police for this uh, occasion. We want him to know that uh, as retired IGs, we are there for his support. And we will always back him when necessary. Thank you very much. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that gentleman joined the police force in the 70s, rose to the very top and retired and inspector general of police in 2007. And very many years after, he's still very strong, very agile, and of course, identifying with the organization that he spent the most of his working life serving. Please put your hands together one more time for IGP retired Sunday Ehinderu CFR. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we want to invite the very next um, speaker who will give a good deal message on this occasion. Um, every event where the police is having an event of this nature, I personally have witnessed that he comes in person. I'm sure it is a testimony to the interagency collaboration that exists between the armed forces and the police. Let me therefore invite the Chief of Defence Staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, General Christopher Musa, to please kindly come forward, sir, and present a message of goodwill on this occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ben. The special guest of honor, the President Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by our Honorable Vice President, Senator Kashim Shatima, the Senate President here in person. Uh, please permit me already uh, to stand on the already established protocol. For me, it is indeed gratifying to be here. We all know the relevance and the importance of the police in every community. Without the police, there will not be law and order. And so I stand here every time I have the opportunity to commend the Nigerian police for all the work, very, very hard work, very, very difficult and hard work that they are doing. And to commend the IGP for standing strong in the face of the challenges we're facing. I want to specifically thank you for that short clips that we watch. It shows the commitment, the sacrifice that individuals make while others are sleeping. There are men that are standing by to say nothing will happen to you as long as I'm on tour of duty. So I want to say thank you for all of you for all they do and to continue to commend them and to encourage them not to get tired. Uh, permit me to go through my script, which is just very short. It is with great pleasure and immense joy that I stand before you today at this inaugural police awards and commendation ceremony to acknowledge and celebrate the exceptional achievement of our police officers. This event marks a significant milestone in recognizing exemplary service and bravery demonstrated by our law enforcement officers. In the face of challenges and adversity, our officers have displayed unwavering courage, professionalism, and commitment to public safety. They have gone above and beyond the call of duty, often placing themselves in harm's way to protect our communities and uphold the rule of law. In every community, police officers are the unsung heroes who stand to protect and serve, often facing formidable challenges and difficult situations. Your professionalism, courage, and compassion are the cornerstone of a safe and secure society. As we celebrate the achievements of our awards recipients today, let us also acknowledge the collective spirit of service that defines our entire police force. Each one of you plays a vital role in upholding the values of justice, integrity, and respect for all. Today, 
let this maiden ceremony serve as a testament to the noble ideals that guide our police force. May we continue to stand together in support of law enforcement and work towards building a safer and stronger Nigeria. To the recipients of these awards, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to you on your outstanding achievements, your dedication, bravery, and unwavering commitment to serving and protecting our communities exemplify the true spirit of law enforcement and embody the values that define us as a nation. Thank you for your service and for continually striving to, to make our neighborhood safe. Your hard work and courage deserves this recognition and more. Please accept my best wishes for continued success and safety as you carry out your vital work. To the families and loved ones of our police officers, I extend my gratitude for your unwavering support and prayers to our men and women who keep our society safe. Let me also appreciate and commend the Inspector General of Police for his leadership and initiative to honor the hardworking men and women of the Nigerian police. I also wish to stand appreciate the Vice President for always being there for the Nigerian police and other security agencies. So also members of the parliament, judiciary, and all Nigerians. This singular act will no doubt inspire the force to greater feat in all their daily endeavors. To those who did not win, there is still work ahead. And I'm sure you're going to win an award one way or the other. And you always remember that Nigerians are always proud of you and will always continue to pray for you. Finally, let me again appreciate our President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, for his unwavering commitment and support to uplifting the Nigerian police and the entire security architecture of the nation, despite daunting challenges. I want to remind us that the challenges we are facing is just a matter of time. Together, hand in hand, we shall defeat all evil coming against this great country. We remain truly grateful and continue to pledge our unalloyed loyalty and dedication to ensure the safety of lives and property across the nation. Let me say, defeat is temporal, victory is forever. Once again, my sincere congratulations to the recipients and the entire Nigerian police force. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Chief of Defense Staff, for your very kind words. We thank all those who have um, come out here to give their messages of goodwill. We've received from them words of commendation. We've received words of encouragement. And I'm very sure that even beyond the four walls of this hall, there are people who are watching the live telecast at home. There are police officers and men whose morale has been boosted by this event, by the very kind words of those who have spoken. We're going to take just one, two, and three more, and we'll be done with these goodwill messages. Next, let me invite the chairman of the, the honorable minister, rather, of police affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as I invite His Excellency, Senator Gaydam, C.O.N.D., the honorable minister of police affairs. Put your hands together for him as he comes up here to present a message of goodwill on this occasion. Thank you very much. In not too long a time, we're going to go into the award ceremony proper. And um, the number of categories we already have been told, I'm sure we're going to want to be witnesses to what we know will definitely not be a one-off. This, I can predict, is one event that will stay and, of course, will continue very far into the future of the Nigeria police. For now, distinguished Senator Ibrahim Gaydam, Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, will present his message of goodwill. Honorable Minister, sir. Allahu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, represented by the Vice President, His Excellency Senator Kashim Shetima, President of the Senate, Senator Goodwill Okpabio, Deputy President of the Senate, Senator Barrow Jibrin. State governors here present, members of the National Assembly here present, honorable ministers here present, representative of the National Security Advisor, 
Chairman Police Service Commission, Chief of Defense Staff, and other service chiefs here present, the Inspector General of Police, IGP KOD, PhD, the Emir of Kano, Alaji Aminu Ado Bayero, members of the Nigerian Police Force, and esteemed recipients of awards and commendations, esteemed members of the press, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure and honor that I stand before you today as the Minister of Police Affairs at the median edition of the Nigerian Police Awards and Commendations Ceremony. This event marks a significant milestone in recognizing the exemplary service and dedication of our brave men and women in uniform who tirelessly work to safeguard our communities and uphold the rule of law. Today, we gather to celebrate the courage, sacrifice, and professionalism of our police officers who have gone above and beyond the call of duty to ensure the safety and security of our nation. It is essential to acknowledge and appreciate the hard work and commitment of these individuals who face countless challenges and risks in the line of duty each day. As we reflect on the invaluable contributions of our police force, we must also recognize the importance of continuous improvement, accountability, and transparency within our law enforcement agencies. The Nigerian police force plays a crucial role in maintaining peace and order in our society, and it is incumbent upon us to provide them with the necessary resources training and support to carry out their duties effectively. Ladies and gentlemen, the Minister of Police Affairs recognizes the need to encourage and support the men and women of the Nigerian Police Force in upholding the values of excellence, integrity, and service in their noble profession of law enforcement. These dedicated individuals serve on the front lines every day facing countless challenges and risks in the line of duty to ensure the safety and security of our communities. The profession of law enforcement is one of the, that demands the highest standard of excellence. Police officers play a vital role in upholding the rule of law, protecting the rights of citizens, and maintaining peace and order in society. It is imperative that we encourage our officers to strive for excellence in all aspects of their work, from investigation and crime prevention to community engagement and service, police, public service. Integrity is the cornerstone of effective policing. Without the trust of the community, law enforcement cannot effectively carry out its duties. It is essential that our police officers conduct themselves with honesty transparency, and ethical behavior at all times. By upholding the highest standards of integrity, our officers can earn the respect and confidence of the public they serve. Service is at the heart of the law enforcement profession. Police officers dedicate their lives to protecting the, and serving others, often putting themselves in harm's way to ensure of their communities. It is crucial that we recognize and appreciate the hard work and commitment of these brave men and women who selflessly serve the people of Nigeria. As we acknowledge the challenges and risks that our police officers face each day, we must also recognize the importance of supporting them in their mission, providing proper training, resources, and support systems for our officers is essential to ensuring their well-being and effectiveness in their roles. May I ask all of us to come together to support and encourage the men and women of the Nigerian Police Force in upholding the values of excellence, integrity, and service in their noble profession. Let us show our appreciation for their hard work and dedication, and let us work towards building a safer and more secure society for all. I commend the leadership of the Nigerian Police Force 
for their efforts in enhance professionalism, integrity, and accountability in the organization. We must strive for excellence in all aspects of policing, from crime prevention and investigation to community engagement and public trust. By fostering a culture of excellence and integrity, we can build a stronger, more responsive, and more trusted police force that serves and protects all Nigerians. To the award recipients, I offer my heartfelt congratulations on your well-deserved recognition. Your dedication, bravery, and commitment to service are an aspiration to us all. Your actions exemplify the best of the Nigerian police force, and I encourage you to continue upholding the highest standards of professionalism and integrity in your work. As we celebrate the achievements of today, let us also remember those officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. Their courage and devotion to duty will never be forgotten, and we must honor their memory by striving for the safer and more just society for all. In, in conclusion, I would like to express my gratitude to all members of the Nigerian Police Force for their unwavering commitment to serving and protecting the people of our great nation. Your sacrifices do not go unnoticed, and we are grateful for your service. Let us work together to build a safer, more secure, and more prosperous Nigeria for all. Thank you all, and may Allah bless us all. His Excellency, Distinguished Senator Ibrahim Kaidam, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Police Affairs. Can we please put our hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much. Just two more, and we would be done with this order of goodwill messages. I want to, at this point, invite His Excellency, the Governor of Kano State, who has been here with us all the while from the beginning of this event, and who, of course, I'm sure, is very friendly with the Nigerian police. That is why he is here personally to support them on this maiden edition of the Police Awards and Commendation. Let me invite His Excellency Engineer Abba Kabir Yusuf, Executive Governor of Kanu State, as he comes up here, sir, to present his message of goodwill on this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a night of celebration, it's a night of commendation, it's a night of appreciation. I think we should not get tired of clapping. Please put your hands together for His Excellency the Governor as he comes forward here to speak to us briefly. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu GCFR, every represented by His Excellency the Vice President, Senator Kashim Shetima GCON. Your Excellency the Senate President, Goswila Fabio GCON. The Deputy Senate President, Senator Barrow Jibrin. Representative of Governor Sia Present. Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, Honorable Minister of State Police Affairs, Honorable Minister of State FCT, distinguished senators and members of the National Assembly here present, the CDS, the service chiefs, and other heads of security agencies former Inspector General of Police here present, traditional rulers, 
Of course, the Emir of Kano, Al Haji Amina Adu Payaru, members of the press, all other protocols duly observed. A very good evening to all of us. It is indeed a great honor to be among you today at this epoch making event where we come together to recognize and celebrate the remarkable achievements and contributions of our law enforcement officers. The partnership between the Nigeria Police Force and Lenders Consult International highlights the importance of collaboration in ensuring the safety and security of our communities. I deemed it very necessary to be here today as it brings immense joy seeing the dedication and commitment of our law enforcement officers being recognized and celebrated by the Nigeria Police Authority and in particular the officers two of them are from Kano State whom we have been supporting in ensuring the peace and security of our communities in particular the CP from Kano Mohammed Ibrahim who has been nominated as the best commissioner of police on community policing initiative. Let me equally recognize the award given to the state's police public relations officer also from Kano State. I must commend at this point the Inspector General of Police and the federal government for implementing policies that are not only impacting on the police personnel, but other government agencies. Since the commencement of the current federal government police reforms, we have witnessed very significantly improvements in the security, safety of lives and properties of good people of Nigeria. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today as we honor the outstanding officers who have demonstrated exceptional courage, patriotism, and integrity, we reaffirm our commitment towards further strengthening the partnership between the government law enforcement agencies as well as the private organizations. So together, we can work towards creating a safer and more secure environment for all the citizens, especially for the good people of Kano State. We will continue to support our police officers, with equip them with the necessary resources and empower them to carry out their duties with excellence and efficiency by the grace of God. Finally, let me seize this opportunity to congratulate all the award recipients for their well-deserved recognition and commendations, their dedication to serving and protecting the good people of Nigeria is truly commendable and appreciate it. Finally, I urge all of you to build on this momentum and strive for even greater achievements in the future. Thank you and God bless. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi His Excellency Engineer Abba Kaveri Yusuf, Executive Governor of Kano State. Thank you very much, sir. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
the last of the messages of goodwill which we believe aggregates the thoughts of the people here and right on the heels of this we're going to go straight into the awards ceremonies and we're going to move quickly so that we can bring this event to a close in good time like we had said earlier it's the first walking day of the week and a number of people came here straight from work we do not take that for granted we appreciate it and we'll do our very best not to stretch your patience too long. Let me therefore invite the gentleman who will speak last in this series of goodwill messages, not a stranger to making excellent speeches. As governor, he was a common governor, senator, of course, a common senator, and I think a common senate president. President of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Senator Godseal Apabio, CON, as he comes forward here, to present his message of goodwill on this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we can give a better round of applause to the President of the Senate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Chinibu, GCFR. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Distinguished Senator Kashim Shazima, GCON, and representing the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. My dear brother, the distinguished Senator Barao Jibrin, let me jump the protocol very well established to just recognize the Chief Host, the Inspector General of Police, our brother Kayode Egbetogun. Well done for what you have done today. Ladies and gentlemen, I've adopted the protocol so far established. If I were to attend this occasion and watch the short film that was shown and I left this all, it would have been enough. The point was aptly met. Even the image of the police had changed with that short video we watched. <laughs> Your Excellency, our dear Vice President, the only good thing they did for us this night is that the person who died was not the person who woke up from the bed. So I want to thank the Inspector General of Police, because many of us were already shedding tears and very apprehensive whether the man will ever see his family again. But thank God you made him to see his family, even though without a leg. So I congratulate the Nigerian police. On behalf of the National Assembly, the Senate, and the House of Representatives, I share the joy of all policemen in particular and all Nigerians in general and lovers of Nigeria, even in the diaspora, on this occasion of the modern, modern edition of the Nigerian Police Awards and Commendation Ceremony. I'd like to extend my warmest regards once again to the Inspector General of Police, my brother Kayode, a way to PhD for this initiative to recognize and honor the outstanding contributions of the men and women of the Nigerian Police Force. I see hope in today's event. The story is told of how Prophet Elijah, known in the Quran as Elia, after three and a half years of drought and his attendant, he now asks his attendant, to go and look for any tiny cloud that he could see in the sky. 
After seven attempts, the assistant came back and told him that he had seen a, seen, seen a small cloud of the size of a man's hand in the sky. Not minding the size of the cloud, Prophet Elijah declared to the people of Israel that a torrential rain was about to pour and was impending. And in fact, God honored his words, and there was a torrent of rainfall. In this country, we have had a deficit of heroes, not because Nigerians are not heroic, but because we do not celebrate our heroes. Yet, heroes play a very vital role in society through the, the, the provision of inspiration, motivation, and hope and serving as representations of values and character of the society. Celebrating heroes could bring the much needed change that we need in the fabric of the Nigerian society. And then definitely will make our dear country a better place to live in. So today, I see this award ceremony as that tiny cloud in the sky, the size of the hand of a man. But I declare, like Prophet Elijah, that out of this event shall come a mighty downpour of recognition. <laughs> out of this event shall come a mighty downpour of recognition of heroes and heroines in all sectors of the public service, in the law enforcement agencies, security agencies, and allied services. It is apt, therefore, to say that the police should set the ball rolling for us in this hero's recognition affair. Many have sought to hang the police, to drive the police for all sorts of stories, all sorts of vices. But the truth of the matter is that the police are all members of the same society that we live in. Down the ages, the popular philosophical thinking was that a man could not be better than his society because society makes the man, socializes the man, orients the man with a sense of right and wrong. But Henry David Thore came with a counter narrative that man can surpass societal limitations and rise above societal norms and expectations. This is what the police is trying to do today with this event under the current leadership. This leadership understands the role of the police in a democracy that cannot be overstated. They are the custodians of law and order, and they ensure the safety and security of lives of our dear citizens. In a democratic society, the police must uphold the highest ethical standards in carrying out their duties. They, they are entrusted with the responsibility of protecting the rights and liberties of the people, whilst at the same time maintaining law and order. I commend the police. I commend the organizers. I just want to add that in future, in making the choice with this modern AI world, let us open it to the public so we can send in recommendations that will assist the committee. For me, this is a testament to the IGP's commitment to giving honor to whom honor is due. By recognizing the gallant, selfless, and patriotic contributions of individual officers, we are not only motivating them for higher performances, but also reinforcing the new policing agenda of the force, which is what President Bola Ahmed Tunibu is committed to and is supporting. This agenda focuses on internal ethical re regeneration, restoration of professional standards, and the enhancement of anti-corruption drive. However, let us not ignore the challenges faced by the police in Nigeria, the ever-evolving landscape of crime, and the increasing sophistication of criminal gangs, you know, significant obstacles that they face on a daily basis. More so, as we honor the good officers, 
Let us weed out the bad officers amongst you, because the chain is as strong as its weakest link. We must therefore address these issues and work together to find solutions. The police need the support and cooperation of all stakeholders to overcome these challenges and build a stronger and more effective force. I congratulate the awardees who have excelled in their respective fields of policing. I salute their dedication, their bravery, integrity that set them apart and made them deserving of this honor. I commend each and every one of them for their outstanding performance and commitment to the service of our dear nation. I urge them to remember that to whom much is given, much is expected. As the leader of the National Assembly, I pledge our full cooperation and support of the entire legislature in Nigeria to ensure better policing through oversight functions, through budgetary provisions, and through other means that we can. We recognize the importance of a well-equipped and motivated police force in ensuring the security and well-being of our citizens. We will continue to work tirelessly to provide the necessary legislative framework and resources to enable the police to carry out their duties. Finally, I'd like to express my gratitude not just to the Inspector General of Police, but to all the heads of security agencies here present, whose officers and men are on a daily basis paying the supreme sacrifice to keep this country one. So let us use this occasion to celebrate the achievements, not just of the Nigerian police, but of all the security services in Nigeria, and to reiterate our commitment to working together with them for a safer a more secure Nigeria. Congratulations to the awardees and congratulations to the Nigerian police. Thank you. Please can we see Jamal House together for the Senate President and the Chairman of the 10th National Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Your Excellency, Senate President. I could remember I think 2012 or 2013. You are the governor of Akwa Ibo State then. And you hosted us to a dinner at Spiros when the then the first Spiro, DRG Frank Mba, took us to Akwa Ibo State for our conference. Thank you so much. I am sure we're going to have your blessings as we have witnessed this occasion today. All we need, I know, National Assembly will support the Nigeria Police Force. Thank you. The Senate President. Quick one, let me welcome to this event the MBA President, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, YC Maker, and the Executive Secretary, Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, Dr. Yemisi Bangbushi. Then we have the representative of the Governor of Imo States, Governor Hope Uzodema is able to present it here, by Ambassador Dr. Ujiako Ofri. Then we have here DIG Mike Zokumo, retired, former DIG operations, is joining us. We have Dr. Mrs. Aisha Tosan, have Mr. Steve Olu VGS, Police Emergency Platform. We have the DG Voice of Nigeria, Jobre Babandase, is here with us. We have in the house Kole Araoye. And of course, members of Police Officers' Wives Association who have accompanied the power president to this event. Power, power members, we appreciate all of you. Gradually, we are moving to the main event of the day. Ralph, what do we have on the next item? Thank you. Award. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We've come to the high point of this event, so to speak, the very reason why all of us are here gathered. In the course of his remarks, the chief host of this event and the Inspector General of Police has spoken about the fact that a good number of police officers have performed their duties creditably well in different divisions and commands all over this country. 
but these few are the ones that have been selected more or less as a representation of the excellence that is found in others. And so without any further ado, we're going to take the first set of awards. And I have been reliably informed that the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs is the one that will make the presentation for Crime Buster of the Year, Traffic Warden of the Year, and the Police Sportsman of the Year. I believe that the control is ready. We can have the nominations now. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have um, a video um, clip that will um, take charge of these presentations. We'll announce the nominations and the winners. And of course, the winners will come forward and will accept the awards first from the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, His Excellency, Distinguished Senator Ibrahim Gaydam, CON. Control, please. Buster of the Year. The nominees are SP Garba Ibrahim, 2IC, Anti Kidnapping, Katsuna Command, CSP Odeyaiwa Oladi Meji, OC Anti Kidnapping Unit, Emo State Command, DSP Adeyemi Akim, Team Leader, Monitoring Unit, Zone 2. And the winner is CSP Odeyaiwa Oladi Meji. CSP Odeiwa Oladi Meji is the OC Anti Kidnapping Unit, Imo Command. He joined the Nigeria Police Force on 15th August 2002 as a member of Course 36 Cadet ASP. The gallant exploits of CSP Odeiwa and his men have brought relief and a new lease of life, not only to their victims, but to all law abiding citizens in Imo State. On Monday, 4th of December 2023, he and his team stormed the criminal hideout of a deadly IPOB and ESN terrorist syndicate led by Ebube Virus and Ishaka at Umuogu Amuzu in Abom BC local government area of Imo State and dislodged the terrorists. During the exchange of fire, the second in command to Ebube Virus was incapacitated. One AK 47 rifle loaded with 19 rounds of live ammunition was recovered and the camp destroyed. He has conducted several operations which has destroyed the camps of the terrorists in Mbidi, Mbisi Ngolpala and other locations where the criminals herniate. During these operations, many suspects have been arrested and arms and ammunition recovered. Among the weapons recovered include AK-47 rifles, rounds of 7.62x39 mm live ammunition, pump action guns, live cartridges, revolver pistols, biker pistols and improvised explosive device IED. He also recovered stolen vehicles while many victims have been rescued. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, can we please put our hands together for the winner of Crime Buster of the Year, Chief Superintendent of Police, Odeye Yuwa Oladimeji, Officer in Charge, Anti-Kidnapping Unit, Imo State Command. Please put your hands together for him as he comes forward to receive his award from the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs. Please kindly come forward, sir.
distinguished ladies and gentlemen, being decorated here by the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, Chief Superintendent of Police, ODA, you are Oladi Meiji. Of course, the brief uh, information when that video was playing gave us an insight into the work that he has done in the Imo State Command. After that pin, he will receive this award plaque from the Honorable Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. Thank you very Allah much. Allah is the commander at the kidnapping unit in Timor State. That place they call the Tiger Base. He also receives this uh, award plaque. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, presenting at the maiden edition of the Nigeria Police Awards and Commendations, Crime Buster of the Year, Chief Superintendent of Police, Odeyewa Oladimeji. Please give him a big round of applause as he goes back to his seat. Thank you very, very much. We hope that we're going to move faster with this control as we move straight. Can we have the two other nominees to please come forward? Thank you. Traffic Warden of the Year. Thank you. The crime buster of the year. The two nominees, the remaining ones. Superintendent of Police, SP Garba Ibrahim. And DSP Ademi Akim. Akim. Are they here? For having been nominated, I'm very sure that, of course, the IGP has a gift for at least everyone that has been nominated. Is it? DSP Adey Emea Kim is team leader, monitoring units on two command Onikon Lagos. Every nominee has something to go on with there today. We are for you, loaded. Can we have SP Garba Ibrahim, 2IC Anti Kidnapping Casino State Command? These are great crime busters. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for these gentlemen, officers of the Nigeria Police. Thank you very, very much. As they return to their seats, I think we can take the next one. Traffic Warden of the uh, Control, please. Traffic Warden of the Year. The nominees are Grade 3, Alabi Coyote, Traffic Warden, Quara State Command. Grade 1, Salisu Haruna, Traffic Warden, Enugu State Command. Grade 1, Abdullahi Ibrahim, Traffic Warden, Area Command Dutse, Jigawa State. And the winner is Grade 3, Alabi Kayode, GD3. Alabi Kayode is a Traffic Warden in the Kwara State Command. He joined the force on 1st June 2007. He is a conscientious traffic warden. For his dedication to duty, he received several commendations, including Certificate of Excellence Award from the Royal Shepherds and Christ Apostolic Church Worldwide on 17th April 2019. Outstanding Performance of the Year Award from Quara Achievers Awards. Commendation Certificate from the Royal Shepherds. Recognition Award from the Rotary Club, Eloran District and Traffic Warden of the Year in December 2022. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we want to invite the immediate past Inspector General of Police, IGP retired Usman Akali Baba, to please kindly come forward up here and help us make these presentations to Traffic Warden of the Year. Please, can the three of them who were nominated come forward, please? But the winner will come last. The three of them should please come forward. The winner will come last, please. Thank you very much. 
as I'll come forward right here for the presentation. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that is the traffic warden of the year. Allah be Kayode, get three, Allah be Kayode from Quora State Command. Then we have great one, Saliso. Aruna, a travel warden from Enugu State Command. And we have Grade 1 Abdullah Ibrahim, travel warden, Area Command, Joseph State Command. As other nominees. Let me hold this one. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Salisu Aruna, Thank you please. very much. That is the gentleman who came in first position for traffic warden of the year. People are wondering about the stage. The stage Wait. is very firm, very secure. <laughs> we have three nominees per category. When we have the winner, then the other two will definitely go home with something they are to be commended and they receive commendations from the Inspector General of Police. Thank you very much. Please, we kindly request the retired IGP to please make the presentation of the very next one, Police Sportsman of the Year. Control, please. Police Sportsperson of the Year. The nominees are Corporal Collins Obi, National Swimming Champion, Force Headquarters Abuja. Constable Tom Brakpa Gripa, cycling gold medalist and African 200 meter sprint champion, Force Headquarters Abuja. Corporal Abe Yetunde, international super flyweight female champion, Force Headquarters Abuja. And the winner is Corporal Abe Yetunde. Corporal Abe Yetunde is the Lion Boxing Organization LBO International Super Flyweight Female Champion after defeating Lulu Kayangi of Tanzania by unanimous decision in December 2023. Earlier in February 2022, she defeated United Kingdom's Laura Payne in East Sussex, London to become the World Boxing Foundation WBF International Super Bottom weight champion, making her the first Nigerian and African female to achieve this feat. She has the current professional boxing record of 11 fights, 11 wins, 9 knockouts, and no single loss. She officiated in the Zone 3 African Amateur Female International Boxing Bouts in Congo, Kinshasa, where she was also honored with the commendation of excellence. Corporal Abe Yetunde is currently the best female boxing official in Nigeria. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we invite the Police Sports Person of the Year, Corporal Abe Yetunde, to kindly come forward, accompanied by the other two nominees, Corporal Collins Obi and Constable Tombrapa Gripa. You can see her with the boxing titles that she has won. International Superfly with Female Champion. And a series of other awards. Well, they say no be by size, so if you join this girl somewhere, I think say you go be right this lady. Okay. That's so double how right is your name. Okay, now fly with so now fly Spread with. Is not measured by bulk.
Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. We may recall that the Nigeria Police has made immense contribution to sports in this country. The history of sports and sporting excellence cannot be complete without mentioning that the very first ever individual, the first ever individual Olympic gold medal in this country was won by a policewoman so very many years ago, setting the tone for very many others. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together one more time for Corporal Abi Yetunde, the police sports person of the year. Thank you very much. We will also invite Constable Tombrapa Gripa, one gold medalist in cycling at the African 200 meter spring champion, and she is of force headquarters. That's the list of the medals that she's got there. Please put your hands together for Constable Tombrapa Gripa. Thank you very, very much. Please. Then the third, the third nominee, Corporal Collins will be national swimming champion. He's already away on another assignment in Russia. Now, one of the other for sports secretaries will represent him to receive the award. Job Atabo. Not being winner more in the represent. Uh, don't don't yeah. smile too much. Because they, they look and say this guy is, you know, be so. The way yeah. you are smiling. He don't yeah. represent. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. We want to thank the immediate past IGP, and we please request that he return to his seat. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for IGP Usman Baba Kali. Thank you very very much, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. The next set of awards will be presented by His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State. And we're going to take the awards for Community Policing Advocates of the Year, Police Public Relations Officer of the Year, and the Police Medical Personnel of the Year. Please, because of time and the lack of it, all the nominees for each category, once the video begins to roll, all three of them, you don't need to stop on the aisle, come all the way to the stage so that the presentation can begin immediately, the video ends. Community Policing Advocate of the Year. Control, please. Community Policing Advocate of the Year. S.P. Larry Kari, Augustus. S.P. Larry Kari, Augustus Wabi. City Mohamed Hussaini Gume. C. Division Jaws, Plateau State Command. C.S.P. Adini Adekunle. C.S.P. Hussaini Gume, F.I.P.M.A. P.S.C. Commissioner of Police, Kano State Command. C.S.P. Adini Adekunle, Divisional Police Officer, Kemta Division, Ogun State Command. And the winner is CP Mohammed Husseini Gumel Fitma, PSC. CP Mohammed Husseini Gumel is the Commissioner CP of Police of Kano State Command. Command. He enlisted in the Nigeria Police Force in 1992 as a member of Corps 17. He has served as CP Sequoto Command and CP TIU IGP Secretariat. CP Gumel is an unrepentant advocate of community policing and its impact in fighting against criminality and resolving potentially volatile conflicts. Within one month of his assumption of office as CP Kano, through the interagency collaboration intelligence gathering, stakeholders' engagements, and other community policing strategies. He reduced drastically the incidences of mobile phone robbery in the Kano metropolis. Realizing the theft of mobile phones was rampant because of the large number of thugs, he embarked on a series of engagements with stakeholders, which worked effectively, leading to a drastic reduction in the number of thugs in the city. He also successfully cancelled 222 youths to repent from their acts of thuggery. In 2023, he engaged relevant stakeholders with the aim of fostering understanding, dialogue, and cooperation towards finding sustainable resolutions to the 40-year-long farmers and health Ladies classes. and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Commissioner Police, Mohamed Hussain Gumel, CP Kano State, receiving his award from His Excellency, the Governor of Kano State. SP Larika Augustus Wapi. The other two nominees would um, receive their <laughs> certificates of nomination and commendation. On behalf of the IGP, from His Excellency the Governor of Kano State, CSP Adeni Adekunle,
These are evangelists of community police initiatives of the Inspector General of Police in their various areas of responsibility. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Is the least we can do for them. As we take the next one, Police Public Relations Officer, PPRO of the Year. Control, please. Can the nominees begin to make their way Police forward? Public Relations Officer of the Year. The nominee. SPA Adafi Bright, Delta. Bright, Police DSP Public Relations Daniel, Officer, Delta State. Okay, Ndukwe, Enugu. Police SP Public Relations Officer, Kano. Enugu State Command. SP Haruna Abdullahi, Police Public Relations Officer, Kano State Command. And the winner is SP Haruna Abdullahi. SP Haruna Abdullahi is the Police Public Relations of the Kano State Command. He was enlisted into the Nigeria Police Force on 9th July 2012 as a cadet ASP and a member of Course 26 Stream. He pays exceptional attention to communicating and engaging with the people, especially in their local Hausa language. He participates in about five weekly programs on radio, television, and other fora. Between 1st January 2023 and 31st December 2023, he prepared and circulated 90 press releases, 150 photo news, 165 engagement videos, and 20 press releases on both conventional and social media. He is a recipient of the Inspector General of Police Commendation for exemplary representation of the police community partnership and dominating the social media space through social media engagements. He is also a recipient Ladies of Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the PPRO Kano State Command and Police Public Relations Officer of the Year, the SP Haruna Abdullahi. While we advise the other two, DSP Daniel Nukwe Ekea, PPRO Inugu, and SP Edafi Bright, PPRO Delta, to receive their commendation. organizations. for having been nominated, of course, meaning they've done an excellent job and they're good enough. There can only be one winner, but all the nominees are winners, if you were to ask me. SP Edafi Bright, please. The next set of nominees are for Police Medical Personnel of the Year. Can the nominees begin to come forward, please? His Excellency, the Governor of Kano State, will help us present this one also. Your Excellency, thank you very much. Can we have CSP Yeboro Mena Chiso to come forward from Oku State Command, ACP Kasi Mola Kunle Olayemi from Moyo State, and ACP Dere Yusuf Olalekon from Ondo State Command. Come forward first. The three of you to come forward. Can three of them kindly come forward, please? Nominees for Police Medical Personnel of the Year. Please come, please come, please come. Police please come medical all the way to the stage, the please. Year. The all the way to the stage, please. CSP Ihiaburu Minachisko, OC Medical, Ogun State Police Medical, ACP Kazim Olakunle Olayemi, Medical Officer, Nigeria Police Medical Service, or your state. ACP Dere Yusuf Olaleka, Medical Officer, Nigeria Police Medical Services, Akure. And the winner is ACP Dere Yusuf Olaleka. ACP Dere Yusuf Olaleka is a medical officer with the Nigeria Police Medical Services in Akure. He joined the Nigeria Police Force on 19th April 2010 
be observed in the NPMS Undo, Borno and Kano states. He initiated a complete automation and use of electronic medical record system EMR and telemedicine for effective service delivery. He also completed the automation of X-ray radiology services via use of picture archiving and communication system PACS and remodeled and equipped a building in 17 PMF bays to a 10 bedded clinic while also carrying out a facelift and reinvigoration of older clinics. He has secured full accreditation and treatment site for people living with HIV AIDS, PLWA, accreditation by the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria and for other secondary services like OBS and GYN, internal medicine, pediatric surgery, physiotherapy, radiology, dental, optometry services, pharmacy and laboratory. He further installed a 10 kVA solar system to provide uninterrupted power supply in the hospital. His medical facility was voted best performing secondary health facility on health management information system in Ondo State for two consecutive years. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the nominees and the winner, ACP Dere Yusuf Olaleko, Medical Officer from Ondo State. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Governor of Kano State. As His Excellency goes back to his seat, I think we should give him another round of applause. Please put your hands together for His Excellency. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we do not want to spend too much time on the award ceremonies, despite the fact that this is the high point of this event. But we want to please um, invite the nominees for Cybercrime Buster of the Year, Investigator of the Year, and Detective of the Year. These awards will be presented by the Chairman of the Police Service Commission, Dr. Solomon Arasi. Um, thank you very, very much. And the nominees for Cybercrime Buster of the Year. Control. Okay, the nominees for Cybercrime Buster of the Year Ah, ASP Namdi Ebunike from the Nigeria Police Force National Cybercrime Center, Force Headquarters, Abuja. ASP Zubero Usman, OC Cybercrime, Adamawa State Command. And ASP Kabera Awal, State CID, Katsina State Command. Can the nominees please come forward, please? Thank you very much. The three nominees, ASP Namdi Ebunike, ASP Zuberu Usman, and ASP Kabel Awal. Thank you. We want three of you standing right here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, three of them have been nominated, but only one person can image winner. Let me therefore announce the winner of the Cybercrime Buster of the Year. Assistant Superintendent of Police, Namdi Ebunike from the Nigeria Police Force National Cybercrime Center, Force Headquarters, Abuja. Please put your hands together for him as he moves forward to receive his award, the pin, the medal, and the certificate from the Chairman of the Police Service Commission. That's a very encouraging applause. Can we please keep it up? Can we please keep it up? Thank you very much. I'm sure that name rings when you hear that name, Ego Nike. Ego Nike. The late DIJ DFA, Joseph Ego Nike. That is a son to the late DIJ Joseph Ego Nike. Uh, this one are the columns that if I old boy, he can do anything on system, nothing we know he do. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there are certain comments that only the first PRO can make because it's the one who knows. We invite the other nominees to please kindly go forward and receive this ASP Zuberu Usman and then, of course, ASP Kabere Awa. Zuberu Usman first, please. From Adamawa State Command. Next, Investigator of the Year. Investigator of the Year. Can the nominees please begin to come forward? 
CSP Mustafa Mohammed Musa, DPO Ado Central Ekiti State Command, SP Ogumalashi Bushala Miriam, OC Anti Piracy Zone 2 Onikon Lagos, and SP Kasumori 1 Oluropo, OC CP Tactical Team Ijanikin Area K Command, Lagos State. The Chairman of the Police Service Commission will, of course, help us present this one more time for Investigator of the Year. Please stand a bit closer so that we can have all of these on camera. No, they run for your brother. Thank That's you your brother very out. much. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have here the three nominees for Investigator of the Year and the winner for Investigator of the Year. Superintendent of Police, Kasumu Riwan Oluropo, OC, CP Tactical Team in Janiki, Lagos. Please put your hands together for him as he goes forward to collect the pin, of course, representing this particular recognition. There is a certificate and an award plaque also from a gentleman who spends the best part of his life conducting investigations himself rising to the very top of the Nigeria police as the attendant inspector general police, a lawyer, a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, and of course, currently chairman of the Police Service Commission, Dr. Solomon Arase CFR. Thank you very much. But the gentleman receiving this recognition is SP Kasumo Rewan Uluropo from the, the OCCP tactical team Ijaniki, Lagos. He has received the... This is... He has received the certificate and that is the plaque. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for him. Please put your hands together for him. It is the one night where these gentlemen get this recognition. Please give them an encouraging round of applause. Thank you very much. We will invite the other two CSP, Mustafa Mohammed Musa, DPO Ado Command, AKT State. He will receive his. And last but not the least, the second or the third, rather, female officer on this stage, SP Busala Miriam, OC Anti Pirate Season 2, Onikon Lagos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll please crave the indulgence of the Chairman of the Police Service Commission to help us present just one more, sir. And this is for Detective of the Year. Detective of the Year. The nominees should please begin to make their way forward from the Anti Vice Intelligence Squad, Oshun State Command, Inspector Adekola Joseph. From the State CID, Enugu Command, Inspector Evaristus Onya. From the anti theft Unit, State CID, Kano State Police Command, Inspector Aminu Suleiman Jikamshi. Please put your hands together for the nominees as they make their way forward. Thank you very much. Three of them going right up here to receive the award. One of them will get as Detective of the Year. And the other ones, of course, do really recognize for their work as detectives in the Nigeria police. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, of those three nominees, the winner for Detective of the Year at this maiden edition of the Police Awards and Commendation is from the State Criminal Investigation Department, Enugu State Command. Please put your hands together for Inspector Onya Evaristus as he goes forward to receive his commendation from the Chairman of the Police Service Commission. Thank you very much. The other two nominees, Inspector Adekola Joseph, please proceed. 
Thank you. Adekala Joseph. And last but not the least, Inspector Amilu Suleiman Jikamishi. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we decided not to play the videos to save time so that we do not keep our guests here longer than necessary. But of course, the exploits of this gentleman are definitely very much in record and I'm very sure we've made public so that we can appreciate the reason why they are so recognized on this occasion. To serve as an encouragement to others who will be doing, are still doing the work of securing and enforcing law and order in, in this country. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for him as he returns to his seat. And we want to thank very especially Dr. Solomon Arasi, Chairman Police Service Commission, for helping us to make the presentations. Thank you very, very much. Please, the next set of awards, and we're going to move faster. Patrol Team of the Year, nominees, please proceed forward. DPO of the Year, please, nominees, kindly come forward. Area Commander of the Year, nominees, please, kindly come forward. Thank you very much. As they come forward, we will go straight to the patrol team of the year. The nominees are the team leader, Federal Safer Highway Patrol on the Yabo Agungu Sayina Road, Sokoto State Police Command. The patrol team from 40 PMF Taraba Command, made up of Inspector Usman Haruna, Inspector Gambo Garmaju, Inspector Difference T and Corporal Zaharadrimi Mahmuda. And last but not the least, Operation Habamaza Desert Intervention Squad, DIS, Yobe State Command. Please can they come forward as we'll invite most respectfully the Honorable Minister of State for Police Affairs, Honorable Haja Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, FSI, to kindly come forward and help us make these presentations. First, to Patrol Team of the Year, next to DPO of the year, and lastly, under this category, to Area Commander of the Year. Can we please have the Patrol Team of the Year nominees come forward, please? Patrol Team of the Year. As we can see on the screen, Team Leader, Federal Safer Highway Patrol, Sokoto State Command, Patrol Team 40, PMF, Tanaba State Command, and then Operation Habamaza, from the Desert Intervention Squad, Yobe State Command. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the patrol team of the year, ladies and gentlemen, the patrol team from 40 PMF, Taraba State Command, made up of Inspector Usman Haruna, Inspector Gambo Maramuju, Inspector Difference T, and Corporal Zaharadim Mahmouda. Please put your hands together for them as they come forward to receive this recognition. Thank you. Your Excellencies, that is the team leader receiving on behalf of the team. But since they are a team, I think it is proper that the other members of the team just go close, just go closer. Other members of that particular winning team, other members of that particular winning team, please. Thank you very much. The next recipient. and then Operation Habermaza from Yobe States. But this is the team leader from the Federal Safer Highway Patrol. Thank you very much. And then of course the team leader from Operation Habermaza. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, since the winning um, nominee is a team, please, 
I think it is only proper that the four members of the team just take the group photograph with the Honorable Minister of State. The four members of the winning team, please. Thank you very much. Just a group photograph with the Honorable Minister. It would be remiss on our part to have these people work as a team and only one of them hog the limelight. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. Thank you very, very much. Congratulations, 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 congratulations. You can turn around so that we can take a can turn around so we can have a group photograph. Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not sure we're tired of clapping. Please put your hands together for them. <laughs> Divisional Police Officer of the Year, please, the nominees should begin to come forward. DPO of the Year nominees. Superintendent of Police, Ojekule Nuruddin Ishola, DPO Taraka Command, Benue State. Taraka Division, rather. CSP Shaba Ali UDPO Ekpan Division Delta Command and CSP Babayola Mohammed Musa DPO Buari Division in FCT Command. Ladies and gentlemen, for DPO of the Year at the Maiden Police Awards and Commendation, please put your hands together for CSP Shaba Ali DPO Ekpan Division Delta State Police Command. He emerges the winner in the category of Divisional Police Officer of the Year. Can he please proceed to be so decorated? Thank you. CSP Shaba Aliyu, please. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the organizational structure of the Nigeria Police, the divisions play a very critical role. Their outposts, their divisions, and of course, their area commands, their state commands. Wow. And this one's head the divisional police units. Thank you very much. The other two nominees. Can they please proceed? Nominees for Area Commander of the Year, please kindly come closer. Come closer, please. Can I please request them to come closer? The nominees for Area Commander of the Year, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for them as they return to their seats. Thank you very much. For Area Commander of the Year, the nominees are ACP, Mohammed Z. Musa, Commander Portiscom Area Command, Yobe State, ACP, Shewu Alao, Area Commander, Shagamu Area Command, that is in Ogun State, and ACP, Obigwa, Francis Obigwa, PSC, Area Commander, New Karo Command, I believe that is in the Federal Capital Territory. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the winner is ACP Mohammed Z. Musa, Commander Portiscom Area Command of the Nigeria Police. Please put your hands together for him as he receives his decoration and, of course, he will receive his certificates and the plug. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, the other two nominees, ACP Shew Alao and ACP Obigwa Francis Obigwa, will also receive their own certificates of recognition. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Area Commander of the Year. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them as they return to their seats. We want to thank the Honorable Minister of State for Police Affairs also for making this presentation. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister of State for Police Affairs. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we will be winding down on this um, segment of this event in not too long a time. The next set of awards, Police Legal Officer of the Year, Award for Gallantry, and the Award for Integrity. This one will be presented by, and we want to respectfully invite, the Chief of Defense Staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, General Christopher Musa, to please help us make these presentations as we invite the nominees to begin to come forward um, quickly, please. Thank you very much. Police Legal Officer of the Year, nominees ASP Madaki Wisdom Emmanuel, Legal Section Force Headquarters Abuja, Superintendent of Police Yetunde Olabisi Kadosu, Legal Section Legal State Command, and Inspector Daniel Shagbo Kwaglade, Legal Section Benue State Command. The three nominees for Police Legal Officer of the Year, of course, there's quite a whole lot that is going to be written about this one in the publication that will be made prior to this event. The winner from the legal section, Force Headquarters Abuja, ASP, Madaki Wisdom Emmanuel. Please put your hands together for him as he goes forward to receive this, his recognition from no less a person than the Chief of Defense Staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, General C.G. Mosa. Thank you very much. Congratulations. One more. Thank you very, very much. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen, as we invite SP Yetunde Olabisi Cardoso to receive her recognition and then Inspector Daniel Shabwa Kwagladi, the legal section, Benue State, to also receive his recognition. Thank you. The award for gallantry, which will also be presented by the CDS. Can the nominees begin to come closer, please? CSP Alphos Andrew, OC Anti Kidnapping Unit, Katsina State Command. SP Eliagu Augustine, Commander Counter Insurgency Joint Operation FOB, Aguata Anambra State, and ASP Iro Shwaibu, Unit Commander 27th Squadron PMF Katsina State Command. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the winner in the award for gallantry, SP Eliagu Augustine, Commander Counter Insurgency Joint Operations FOB, Aguata Anambra Command. Please put your hands together for him as he goes forward to receive his commendation, receive his medal, receive his due recognition from the Chief of Defense Staff on behalf of the Inspector General Police. Still one more remaining. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. We're opting out of the Nigeria Police Awards and Commendation Ceremony all day at the Congress Hall Transcop Heating Hotel in Abuja to bring you TVC News at 10. You're watching TVC News at 10, our top stories tonight. Police parade suspected armed Yoruba nation agitators who invaded the Oyo State Secretariat in Ibadan last Saturday. Corona inquiring into the cause of death of Doan College student Sylvester Romani says his death is natural but avoidable. 
And the foreign scene hush money trial filed against former U.S. President Donald Trump is underway in New York. We're staying with a development in Oyo State where the police command has paraded 21 suspected members of the Yoruba Nation agitators who invaded the Oyo State Secretariat in Ibadan last Saturday. They were paraded alongside several exhibits recovered from them at the state headquarters in Ibadan. TV Senior Senior Reporter Olaido Yewale was there. It's three days after suspected members of the Yoruba Nation Secession Group invaded the Oyo State Secretariat in Agodi. They attempted to seize power from the government after hoisting their flag. After engaging in a gun battle with security personnel, the suspects were arrested and are now being paraded by the police and are to face prosecution for their actions. The commissioner of police described the act as criminal and unpatriotic and assured residents of Oyo the police's unwavering commitment to protecting their lives and property. While declaring this act as criminal, unpatriotic, and a clear case of treasonable felony and terrorism to be met with adequate sanctions through purposeful prosecutions, the command reassures the good people of Oyo State that it remains solidly unwavering to the protection of their lives and property as constitutionally required by the laws of the land. He asked parents to prevail on their children against being used as agents to cause chaos in the state. As a parent, I enjoy other parents, guardians, and leaders in every sphere of political, religious, and social influence to prevail on their children, words, protests, and followers against being used by unpatriotic individuals to promote anarchy in the state and by extension, the nation. Alabi Ogundeji, one of the suspects, is a teacher at the Federal Government College, Oyo. For him, there is no going back in the attainment of their independence, as they have the backing of the appropriate international bodies. We are indigenous people of Yoruba. We are in Yoruba land, and that is why we have done that. And we have done all the legal activities and procedures that, we need, that need to be done. So who granted you the sovereignty? The United Nations, of course, and the Charter of the United Nations, the African Union, the ECOWAS Court, and the uh, EU. Are there documents to support all Yes, this? we have all documents. This 75-year-old and his daughter said they were introduced to the group with promises of a better life after achieving their so-called independence. Items recovered from the suspects include guns, live cartridges, cutlasses, paraphernalia of various offices with Yoruba Nation inscriptions, among others. Olaido Yewole, TVZ News, Ibado. And for more on the arrest, Executive Director, Committee for the Protection of People's Mandate, Nelson Nekujume, joins me on the news at 10. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Your organization has called this an act of terrorism, but are you concerned that security agencies did not get intel before this happened? Uh, bearing in mind that they actually seized the radio station in Badon less than a year ago. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, this is a lapse or laxity on the part of the security agencies. And uh, with this latest development by this bunch of miscreants, one hopes that the security agencies will dig deeper in order to uncover those constraints this uh, bunch of food blocks and allow the law to take its course in regards to this act of terrorism that they attempted to unleash on the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but has been lived in the court and now they are facing the court. It is only it is only criminal, it is an act of terrorism. And I also we must recognize that the they've been in possession of um, it's also again without the authorization of the state, it's also an it's also a criminal act. Mm. So one expects that uh, the security agencies will do the need in arraigning them and making them, you know, to go to the rigors of the uh, judicial process and justice they done to the to, to body uh, uh, perpetrators, these Indeed. suspects, as well as to the United States. Yoruba Nation advocates like um, Sunday Go and Professor Akintoye have disassociated themselves with this. Do you agree that perhaps a new faction uh, may have emerged? 
Well, I I I want to treat their uh, distancing themselves or their condemnation of this act as a uh, as one that one should take with a pinch of salt, because we we are all are living witnesses to how Sunday go started and Professor Banji Akitoye started this act of uh, terrorism against the Nigerian state. And one is surprised that even till now, both of them have not been picked up, because uh, no matter how, how much they try to suscitate themselves, uh, they cannot run away from the fact that they started uh, this mess. Uh, just like uh, IPOP in the Southeast will always disassociate itself from uh, the activities of its uh, uh, members who have continued to unleash mayhem and acts of terrorism on the people of Nigeria. So, also, one is not surprised that Sunday Guru and uh, Professor Banji Akitoye have also done the same. But I want to believe strongly that the security agencies are working around the clock to ensure that if these uh, persons mentioned have a hand, in this latest uh, uh, attack on the Nigerian state, that they will be made to face the full work of the law. Executive Director, Committee for the Protection of People's Mandate, Nelson Okujimi. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much for having me. Let's turn now to Plateau State, where some persons in connection with the recent killings of three operatives of Operation Safe Heaven in Mango and Barakin Ladin local government areas have been arrested. The rifles belonging to the deceased officers taken by the attackers were also recovered. Civil City News senior reporter Funam Joshua reports. Communities in Plato State have suffered a series of attacks and killings in recent times, with security operatives not spared too. Three officers of Operation Safe Heaven were murdered in the line of duty between Mangu and Barkeladi troubled communities. Their rifles were also taken by the perpetrators. Three of our colleagues were gruesomely murdered, two senior NCOs and one police inspector, while discharging their constitutional mandates between Mangu and Park and Ladi local government areas. I have sworn not to rest until all those responsible are brought to justice. And thankfully, we have recovered their weapons and already arrested most of the perpetrators that are responsible, some as far away as Bauchi. Like I always say, you can only run, you cannot hide, we will get you. Allegations of troops being compromised in the line of duty have been strongly condemned and denied by the Operation Safe Heaven. Funom Joshua, TVC News, Joss. The FCT administration has donated 100 patrol motorcycles to different security agencies in Abuja. At the handover ceremony, the minister says the patrol motorcycle should be used for its intended purpose and distribution uh, should be done accordingly, especially to the suburbs facing security threats. This is the outcome of a series of engagement with the FCT area councils where, uh, which were essential in combating insecurity and this is expected to enhance security response to distress calls. I urge you to use it well and take it not for commercial purposes. Not for commercial purposes. I don't want to see this motorcycle in the city here. I don't want to see it in the city here. It should be used in the rural uh, areas. So it should not be used here. We are only trying to see how we can phase out motorcycle, use of motorcycle here. So please let it be taken to the rural uh, areas. Area like uh, Kwaita and so on, uh, like Sukuku and so on. So we are going to up to Yaba, Yebu, Yangoji. Oh, we are going to distribute it to the rural area. It's good for policy. And we want to thank you, the Honorable Minister and uh, tell him that he will see the difference because we needed them. We, you can see, we demanded for more. Even the one that can carry GPMG, we demanded for it. 202 students and workers of the Federal University of Gusu in Zamfara, who have been in captivity for more than 205 days, have expressed gratitude to the federal government for their newfound freedom. National Security Advisor Nuhu Rubado, who received them in Abuja, reaffirmed government's resolve to secure the release of persons still in captivity. Sifonisian reports. 
It's a long walk to freedom for the students and workers of the Federal University Guzao in Zamfara State after more than 205 days in captivity. They were taken from their hostels in the Sabongida community of the Bugundu local government area of the state. A swift response by security forces immediately resulted in the rescue of six of the victims. But freedom for the remaining kidnapped victims arrived piecemeal. Search and rescue was conducted by a combined team of law enforcement agencies and the adoptees were subsequently rescued. The National Security Advisor received the kidnapped victims reaffirming the government's commitment to ensuring no one is left in captivity. There are people who are here, there are people in the bush, there are people outside who fully cooperated and then we are able to successfully carry out operations that will bring people like them here safely back home. This is yet again a success story in our efforts to free all those being unlawfully held in captivity. We have so far released over a thousand, over a thousand of such victims without noise. For some of the victims, the journey to freedom was slow, but they are grateful it eventually came. I feel highly honored on this wonderful opportunity given to me to thank the Almighty Allah and thank the National Security Advisor and the government at large for their job for the safe release, having been in captivity. The spate of kidnappings, especially of students in Nigeria, continues to mount pressure on the government, whose efforts to secure their release are now yielding some results. C4 ACN TVC News, Abuja. Coming up on the news at 10. Kano Ward Executive suspends APC National Chairman Abdullah Gandhuje as local government officials void the action, sack those behind it. We have that story and more after the break. But it's so Hair made specially for me. New Nivea Radiance and Beauty Even Glow, enriched with 95% pure vitamin C and pearl extract. For visibly radiant and even toned skin in just two weeks. New Nivea Radiance and Beauty Even Glow, for your shade of beautiful. Nation agitators who invaded Oyo State Secretariat in Ibadan last Saturday. Corona inquired into the case of death of Doan College student Sylvester Romani says his death is natural but avoidable. And the foreign saying hush money trial filed against former U.S. President Donald Trump is underway in New York. In the next few days, more troops will be deployed to Zamfara State. This move is aimed at sustaining the military onslaught against bandits in the state. The directive is from President Bola Tinubu, whose administration says it's committed to ending the activities of armed bandits and kidnappers in the state. The Philistarify has more. Security agencies have claimed in recent times that they are winning the war against banditry and kidnapping in the troubled areas of Zamfara State, despite pockets of attacks in some areas and on the highways. Terrorist hideouts, motorcycles and other items have been destroyed by the troops in different forests, while rifles and live ammunition amongst others were recovered. This is happening at a time both the federal and Zamfara State government are strategizing on how to end the nearly two decades killings, kidnappings and destruction of properties. Governor Lowell is commending the move by the president and all resident to support security agencies with useful and timely information to tackle the terror. He has directed the, 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 the chiefs of the uh, security to, to deploy more uh, troops 
to, to the state and uh, from the, the reports coming out from the Zamfara, you, will, you, you are witness that um, there are more troops and the onslaught is really uh, recording success. Security is a priority of uh, this uh, administration of Governor Dodalol. So any uh, responsible government will be happy with the uh, uh, successes recorded by the military in these areas, especially Saifi. Saifi was uh, uh, one of the volatile areas in, in, just in the last uh, two months, but now there is a relative peace in Saipi and uh, the bandits were running away from those locations. So we are very happy with uh, the quick response by the federal government. The Zamfara State government also talks about providing the necessary support for the troops to succeed. The governor uh, confirmed to the uh, president that he is uh, cooperating and uh, giving all necessary support to the uh, security in the state and uh, also he will continue to provide all necessary assistance and support from the state uh, uh, level to the military and uh, other security forces. President Tinubu has requested for regular updates from Governor Lowell on the security situation in Zamfara for effective collaboration to win the war against enemies of peace. Safely Zarufai, TVC News Gusau. A corona on Monday ruled that the 12-year-old student of Doan College Lake in Lagos, Sylvester Romani Jr., who died in November 2021 under controversial circumstances, suffered, quote, avoidable excruciating pain, end quote, due to parental and medical negligence by his family doctor, which led to his needless death. The magistrate, Mikhail Kadiri, sitting at the Samuel Lori Courthouse in Ogba, Lagos on Monday, reviewed this while delivering his findings, which lasted for more than six hours. Tivos News correspondent Kemi Foladiemo has details. 32 witnesses in all testified in the coroner's inquest, tasked with unraveling the true cause of Master Oromoni's death. Sitting commenced in January 2022. Among the evidence the coroner relied on included the findings of two autopsies conducted on the deceased at the Central Hospital Wari Delta State with only the family present and at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital where about 10 pathologists representing various parties, the Lagos State Government and Doen College took part in. They all agreed that death was caused by septicemia, a life-threatening health condition caused by a patient's bodily response to an infection. No evidence of blunt force trauma was detected. The findings in the esophagus and stomach were not also compatible with chemical intoxication, and so death was ruled as natural. The coroner also agreed with the report from the second autopsy headed by the consultant pathologist at last Sunday, Shriemi, that the sepsis could have been treated with massive doses of intravenous antibiotics and intravenous fluid, as well as blood transfusion, but which were never done. Sylvester was said to have sustained an injury on his ankle around November the 20th, 2021. Following first aid treatments, the school contacted his parents to come and pick him up for further care. A guardian was sent to the school who took him for an x-ray where no fracture was detected. Despite being in pain, he wasn't taken to a hospital in Lagos until days later when he was moved to his base in Worry and treated at home by the family doctor, Henry Agogo. Dr. Agogo was slammed for not providing the needed duty of care despite an early diagnosis of hepatomegaly, that is an enlarged liver. He was found to have abandoned. I must tell you, as a father, the verdict does not represent the true proceeding of the, of the court. In due course, particularly based on what the father of the disease has said in time past, that even if it takes him 30 years, to pursue this case, he's going to pursue until he gets justice for the late son. Over 900 pages of record of proceedings, and he has produced the truth in line with logic, in line with science. We believe the judgment is consistent with the evidence um, that we presented by the witnesses. So we are very much satisfied, and we are happy that these accused students have finally been vindicated. And Justice Binta Yako of the Federal High Court Abuja has threatened to strike out terrorism charges brought against four defendants by the federal government over the alleged kidnap and killing 
of the traditional ruler of Amazi Obowo Autonomous Community in Imo State is a Barcelona Joko. The threat by Justice Ayako followed the absence of the Attorney General of the Federation, Latifa Gwebe, in court to lead the prosecution of the defendant. Senior reporter on um, senior reporter on judicial matters, Celestina Iria. The four defendants were bid for arraignment by 9 a.m. The judge was forced to shift it to 12 noon because of the non-appearance of the AGF or his representative in court. By 12 noon, when the matter was to resume, neither the AGF nor his representative appeared in court and without any information or communication to the court. The situation prompted the judge to invite lawyers to the defendants into her chambers where an adjournment of April 30th was fixed. Although lead counsel to the defendant, Solomo Ikume, had applied for dismissal of the terrorism charges against the defendants, Justice Ayanku opted to give the office of the AGF another chance to lead a diligent prosecution. The judge, however, held that if the AGF or his representative do not appear in court on the next adjourned date, the court may have no option that will strike out the charges against the defendant due to lack of diligent prosecution. The AGF represented by David Caswell had the last adjournment on 28th of March, taking over prosecution of the defendant from the Inspector General of Police, who initially initiated the trial of the defendant. Mr. Caswell had told the judge that the AGF invoked Section 174 of the Constitution and Section 105 of ACTA to assume trial of the defendants. However, at today's proceedings, neither the AGF or David Caswell and a senior advocate of Nigeria, Simon Long, who was prosecuting the case for the Inspector General of Police, was in court. Death had been served with hearing notice. Meanwhile, Justice Nyanku had ordered that a hearing notice for April 30th arraignment of the four defendants be served on the AGF. Eze Basi Njoku was among the 51 traditional rulers from various communities in Imo State, given the staff of office on Friday, February 4th. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. The Minister of State for Defense, Bello Matawale, has urged Northern appointees in President Bola Tinubu's administration to defend the government and work in its interest or resign. Mr. Matawale's call came after Dr. Hakeem Baba Ahmed, who once served as spokesperson for the Northern Elders Forum and is currently the special advisor to, on political matters in the presidency, cautioned the Minister of State for Defense against outrightly condemning the position of the Northern Elders Forum. Well, the minister had criticized the Northern Elders Forum for saying it regretted supporting Tinubu in the 2023 general election. He described the action of the forum as a political body on the north. He also described the forum as political paperweight. Mr. Matawale insists that for Akim Baba Ahmed, as an appointee of the administration, as special advisor, it's incumbent on him to work for the success of the government he's part of, protect and defend the government against unjust and vicious attacks from those who hide under ethnic and other promote their interest to heat up the polity for myopic reasons. And the All Progressives Congress, um, Gandude Ward, in Dawan Kintofa local government area of Kanu State, has suspended National Chairman of the Party, Abdullah Gandude, with immediate effect. The party's legal advisor at Gandude Ward, Aladu Gunwajo, announced the suspension of the National Chairman in Kanu. Guajo said the decision to suspend Abdullah Ganduje from the party was due to the alleged bribery and misappropriation of funds against him by the Kano state government. The national chairman was suspended after a vote of no confidence was passed on him due to his inability to clear his name of the allegations. But in a swift reaction, the APC State Working Committee in Kano has taken drastic measures against um, the ward party leaders who suspended the national chairman. The party officials in Dawang Kintofa local government area uh, voided the suspension and sacked those behind it. The APC Dawang Kintofa local government chairman, Irusa Dawanao, said those behind the suspension were caught in anti-party activities and the records of meetings with the opposition exposed. The state working committee of the APC, while adopting um, this position, said a special investigations panel has been set up to verify several allegations against them. I'm joined now by Head Department of Cybersecurity, Yusuf Mata. 
Maitama Sule University in Kano, Dr. Mukta Danlami. Uh, Mr. Dr. Danlami, thank you for joining us on the news at 10. So the national chairman of the APC suspended from his ward and then re required intervention from the state government. I mean, the state party. What do you think is happening here? Well, I, I think um, this started from the issue of the judicial commission of inquiry that was set up by the um, administration of Governor Abubakar Abde, Yusuf to investigate uh, the misappropriation of of uh, government properties and thuggery and missing persons. Um, I don't know. I'm not surprised with this development from Ganduja Ward, and I'm very sure anybody from Kano State will not be surprised with this um, kind of activity because the truth is uh, Ganduja has done a lot of terrible things during his administration. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> well, Except you're coming here. <laughs> Yeah, allegedly, but the truth is, I think the backbone for any society is education. And if you look at what Ganduja has done to the educational system of Kano State, it's but not fair. Afterwards, um, the Supreme Court judgment, I thought the Kano State governor you know, was on a mission to reconcile with his predecessors. Um, because he came up with a particular committee involving all of them, right? Yeah, the committee was, uh, I think I remember the committee of all governors, all that, and I can remember their composition. But uh, that aside, that doesn't change what really happened or what transpired. And to me, if Ganduji is, is free of any allegation, he shouldn't be worried of any panel set up to investigate what he has done. But personally, if I look at the educational sector and all the property within the educational environment that were encroached during the Gunduja administration, mm. they are disheartening. So that means that, that the position of the APC at the Kano State level might be considered accurate because you're saying this decision stemmed out of the position of the state governor, who is a member of the NNPP. So perhaps those who did this at the ward level, do you agree that they were well, uh, even, executing an anti-party activity? Even when I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a member of APC, I don't know what they have done. I'm not from Dawai King Tupa. Uh, but uh, on my way coming here, mm. I spoke with someone from there, and what he told me is they are jubilating. And I'm sure he's not, uh, he's an who academic Who were the people jubilating? Um, people in Dawai King so they are happy with this development. They felt it's, it's the right thing. If anybody is under investigation, the best thing to do is to dissociate yourself. But what we're hearing right now is that that decision cannot stand, that the individuals who carried this out have actually been expelled. Well, uh, whether the, 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 the action stands or not, mm. um, what we talk about here is the interest of the people of Kano State. What is their concern? Mm. Whatever happened there might be wrong. The process they took, to do the to make this decision might be wrong, but what is the interest of the people of Kano State, which I'm very sure that's what Abakadir is going to protect. Well, very interesting development. I guess we'll see how this plays out in the coming days. But you're saying that um, this jubilation you talk about is restricted to that ward level. No, it's not. It's, it's general actually. Mm. It's the whole Kano State. But um, I'm surprised even the people from his local government are. Are celebrating this development. If people from outside are, 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 are celebrating, I don't expect for people from the local government to do the same thing. Mm. That's what I was very surprised about. Dr. Mukhtal Danlami is the head department of cyber security, Yusuf Maitema Sule University in Lagos, in Kano. Okay. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, sir. Elsewhere in what is described as night of icons, OB Kubana edition, a GAC Motors, Nigeria's leading vehicle company, hosted a businessman and chairman of Kubana Group, Obi Nayebo, also known as Obi Kubana, and his friends to an all-exclusive birthday celebration. We have more 
in this report. The location was the GAC Motors G-Style showroom in Victoria Island. The event is a party to celebrate icons in every sphere and sector. This time, businessman and chairman of Kubana Group, Obina Yegu, also known as Obi Kubana, is the subject of this party. He recently celebrated his birthday, and GAC Motors thought it wise to celebrate him for its outstanding achievements. We are moving away from just being a regular automobile company. We are now a lifestyle brand. GAC can be, can be, can be associated to greatness in Nigeria, can be associated to the great spirit of Nigeria, can be associated to the resilience of our country and our people. I feel good. I feel special. I feel loved. I mean, look at the setup. It's amazing. I mean, I feel... I feel I'm valued here for them to put up this kind of show just to celebrate my birthday. I mean, it's, it's something that gladdens my heart. The event was also to celebrate the ongoing partnership between Obi Kubana and GAC Motors. The general manager of GAC Motors, Jubril Arungundade, said Obi Kubana has brought tremendous goodwill to the GAC Motors brand with the deployment of over 250 units of its vehicles for the enviable transport services in key cities in Nigeria. We're going to be seeing us celebrating um, very, um, very important people in the society in different industries. Uh, we are not looking at only creative, we are looking from sports to arts to entertainment, even to, to business. We've gotten a whole lot of vehicles from here. They've done a lot of mileage, doing intercity, doing intracity. We've not experienced any issue. So we put our legs and arms and head into the business and say, it's we and GSC for life. So we're happy staying here and then we are looking at the great future. GAC Motors pledge to always celebrate icons in every sector of the nation's economy. To wrap up this event, a brand new GS8 vehicle was given to him in appreciation of his partnership. Business news is next after this break. Stay with us. It's not always smooth. There are rough patches on the path to accomplishment. The struggle continues until solution appears. That launches you to the world of your dreams, protecting, securing, and ensuring that you reach your goals. At International Energy Insurance, we know that the journey to actualizing your dreams could be tough, but we are always there to support you and help you prepare for the unexpected. International Energy Insurance is a Norenberga company now positioned to serve you better. International Energy Insurance, PLC. Energy to care. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Voted as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories. Without the news from every perspective, covering every human angle. I am Veronica, bringing you the news you would want to watch.
All right, in business news, an expert has shared more insights in the impact of continued upward trend of inflation uh, on the Nigerian economy, according to international business project development consultant, Dr. Emeka Okengu, who are reacting to inflation figures which came up earlier today on Business Nigeria. He said there is a need to scale up productivity to counter the rising inflation uh, in the country. The latest figures from MBS shows that Nigeria's inflation rate hit 33.2%. In March 2024. Uh, in this instance, 33% looks high. We could do better than that. Uh, but when compared to countries, you know, like China and America, you know, that have their inflation rates at about 79, 80%, you know, or even higher, you might start asking, what's the magic? Uh, the magic is that these countries, you know, with high inflation rates, and are still able to meet, okay, what you might be able to call uh, the basic principles and indices, you know, of production, of development, is because they are, they, are, they are productive. Okay, this is what might make our own situation look a little bit gloomy. Uh, however, you've asked, how does it impact on the masses? Again, another talking point, if you ask me, uh, the use of the word masses means that we've not been able to build yeah, you know, that proper database that can be able to make masses citizens, okay? And until you get that database where you are planning against definite numbers, that might also impact, you know, on your planning process. New ideas to grow the nation's capital market are being worked out by the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. This development came up when the minister, Dr. Doris Uzoka Anite, met with cap capital market stakeholders in Lagos. If you're on reports. The Federal Ministry of Industries, Trade and Investment and the Nigerian Exchange Group initiate collaboration to enhance the flow of investments and trades. At a meeting with top management of the Nigerian Exchange Group and capital market stakeholders, the minister, Dr. Doris Ozuka Anite, says her ministry will double efforts to improve the fortunes of credit companies while encouraging small and medium-sized firms to list shares at the exchange. Uh, we felt it was important to uh, touch base with the stock exchange, to have a holistic view of the economy, and then also to seek more collaboration as we also drive more investments into the Nigerian economy. Uh, a, lot, a number of these um, listed companies are also um, um, looking for um, capital raise, right issues, and uh, different uh, investment opportunities, which my ministry is also driving heavily. So this also provides us an opportunity to discuss ways that we can collaborate. Chairman of the exchange, Dr. Omaru Kwaranga, told the minister that the stock market has recorded appreciable growth in the last 20 years, competing favorably with other international markets. So I believe with the boa of this world, the unguote of this world, whatever are the challenges that they are facing, the Nigerian breweries and the rest, that will go a long way for you to have maybe package everything and see how you can be able to come in as a government so you can be able to support those private sectors. Because it's going to be a win-win at the end of the day. The group CEO of the exchange, Mr. Temu Popola, he requested the minister to initiate strong policies and corporate actions hinting about market readiness to support Central Bank of Nigeria's directives on banks on raising their capital bases. If it was from the lens of the exchange that we are in today, we are actually quite pleased and encouraged with the state of the capital markets. If that's a reflection of the economy, we're pleased with the level of innovation that we're starting to see. We are pleased with the level of just uh, optimism that is around our industry and our own sector. And frankly, our industry is doing the best that it's done uh, easily over the past two decades or so. Apart from select capital market reporters, representatives from big manufacturing firms like Dangote and Boa groups attended the meeting. Efyong Eko, TVC News, Lagos. The Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission has announced an increase in Nigeria's oil condensate reserves. The Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, who made the announcement in Abuja, declared Nigeria's total oil condensate reserves of 37.5 billion barrels, total gas reserve of 209.26 trillion cubic feet as the official national petroleum reserves position as of the 1st January 2024. Helena Samadie King's reports. 
The provisions of the Industry Petroleum Act gives the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission the power to declare the nation's oil and gas reserves. The chief executive officer, while declaring the reserves along other officials of the commission, highlighted that crude oil and condescent reserves stand at 31.56 billion barrels and 5.96 billion barrels respectively, amounting to a total of 37.50 billion barrels. Associated gas and non-associated gas reserves stand at 102.59 trillion cubic feet and 106.67 trillion cubic feet respectively, resulting in total gas reserves of 209.26 TCF. The reserves life index stood at 68.01 years and 97.99 years for oil and gas respectively. So it will show the level of hydrocarbon capacity the nation is endowed with as uh, one of the leading producers of uh, hydrocarbon resources in the continent. And that is why we kept, I mean, we we'll remember we said that Nigeria alone boasts of over 33% of the total national uh, endowment in Africa in terms of the gas reserve. And is deemed I mean, Nigeria is equally, uh, I mean, now the second largest producer of uh, crude in Africa. The Commission also revealed that it has developed a template guiding the activities for domestic crude oil supply obligation in a bid to foster a seamless implementation of the DCSO and ensure consistent supply of crude oil to domestic refineries. The template, in effect, attempted to resolve 10 issues. By implication, there were 10 major issues uh, that needed to be resolved to, I mean, that is for seamless implementation of the, uh, the uh, provisions of the domestic crude oil supply obligation uh, in the Act that was leading to the challenges that we experienced. I mean, that is the industry that made us to convey, to intervene. Uh, step in as a regulator to resolve the issue between the, uh, the producers and the refiners. The Commission says this move conforms with the policy of the current administration and the declaration of President Tunibu that Nigeria is ready for business. The template includes legal framework, procedure for domestic crude oil requirement allocation, permit instruments, currency of payment and logistic scheduling. Helen Osamede Kings, TVC News, Abuja. Finally, business equities market opened in red. The sales pressure outweighed the buy side sentiment. Trading activities remain subdued in the new week with notable decreases in the total trading volume and uh, valued at 0.52%. UPD Real Estate Investment Trust led the lead list of losers, followed by Morrison Industries, NEM Insurance, Dark Communications, and Wando PLC. The banks led the gainers list with Fidelity Bank, Jais Bank, with 10% and 9.96% respectively. Other gainers are RT Briscoe, Guaranteed Trust Holding Company PLC, and Universal Insurance PLC. That's business next to sports, but we'll also get live feeds from Abuja, uh, where the Vice President, Nito Kashim Shatima, is speaking at the Police Award Ceremony. Sports will be on all the platforms. Stay with TVC News. Yeah. We are here to humanize you. We are here to recognize you. We are here to celebrate you. And Mr. President, we'll never take you for granted. Since assuming office last year, we have been unequivocal about our mission to transform the Nigeria police force into a modern, professional, and accountable institution that mirrors the aspirations and values of our nation. Our idea of a modern police force goes beyond superficial changes like repenting office buildings and residences or simply procuring firearms. Through reform of our security doctrine, and its architecture necessitates recognizing the importance of administering justice and adhering to ethical values to foster stability and order in the nation. 
the transformation we seek must transcend mere policy and infrastructure. It requires a fundamental overhaul of our institutional mentality and memory. So far, we have embarked on a comprehensive program of reform to rejuvenate every aspect of our police force. There is an evident need to invest in training and capacity building to ensure that our police officers are equipped with the knowledge, skills, values, and expertise necessary to tackle the complex challenges of modern policing. On our part, we are upgrading your equipment and technology to enhance operational effectiveness and efficiency. This includes acquiring fit for purpose equipment, weapons, ammunition, and armored carriers to provide cover and protection for officers in combat situations. These endeavors will be supported by suitable measures to enhance the status of our officers and personnel both during their service and after retirement. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in our tradition of honoring the police force in the life of this great nation, we have approved the adoption of the first week of April as Police Week. Furthermore, the last day of the week, the 7th of April is hereby declared National Police Day in Nigeria. Can kindly sit down, please. On this note, on behalf of my boss, President Bola Ahmed Tinibu, GCFR, I wish to extend my congratulations and commendations to the Inspector General of Police and his management team for this thoughtful initiative to honor the best of us. I have no doubt that nothing will boost the morale of our police officers more than knowing them, the nation remembers them and knows how much they have sacrificed, whether they receive an award tonight or not. This is a powerful motivational tool to drive the officers and men and women of our police force towards greater performance. While I celebrate our all recipients at this historic event tonight for their services to the nation, I must remind them of the burden of responsibility upon them now as models to those who aspire for excellence in this line of service. The government and people of this great nation are indeed proud of your contributions and achievements in the service of our fatherland. And we will continue to provide the needed support throughout your services and cater for you in retirement. Finally, I wish on behalf of President Bola Ahmad Tinibu to most profoundly thank the governor of Kano State, the president, the uncommon president of the Senate, and the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for their show of empathy and support to the bereaved families that just received their awards. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we want to very sincerely appreciate His Excellency the Vice President for his very kind words. We thank him for his presence all through the events. We thank, of course, him on behalf of His Excellency the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. This is going to be a very important group photograph. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when Neil Armstrong set his foot on the moon as the very first man to do so in 1969, Chief of Defense Staff, please kindly join, sir. Thank you. 
When Neil Armstrong became the first man to set his foot on the moon in 1969, he made the immortal statement that that is one small step for him, but one giant leap for mankind. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this event may be just one evening for us, but I can bet you it is definitely going to go down in the annals of the history of the Nigeria police. Please, I've been asked to invite the retired inspectors general of police to kindly join respectfully, please. The retired IJPs, thank you very much. The CG, Nigerian Customs Service also, please. Thank you. I think um, we will, the CG. Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Thank you very much. I think we can. Please, those who have taken the first ones with His Excellency, the Vice President, the IG, and of course the Senate President and DSP, we may want to make way for others so that they can join. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is becoming a very long one. We have more people on that way, yes, uh, this way, but we... Thank you. Let's have some balance, please. If we have some balance, please. It will be... Okay, okay. Welcome back from the live telecast. We'll now continue with our regular programs. Stay tuned. The Pond Star Summer Daniels, ahead of the 2016 election, which he won. Daniels claimed he and Trump had sex in 2006, and she was then paid by uh, Trump's then lawyer, Michael Cohen, to stay quiet. Trump is accused of falsifying his business records by saying the reimbursement money he gave Cohen was for legal fees. He faces 34 counts of fraud, but denies any legal wrongdoing, and also denies having an affair with Daniel. The maximum penalty if Trump is found guilty is four years behind bars, but experts say a much less severe penalty would be more likely. And that's the news at 10. For more updates on the stories we're monitoring here, you can visit our website, tvcdews.tv. Follow us on our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, and on X. YouTube will live at TV News in Nigeria. On behalf of everyone here, thank you for watching. I am Nisani. Open to it. Toilets of better cleaning than bleach. Than bleach? Yes, so. Oh. In Corsica. Toilets have stains which bleach cannot clean effectively. But Hapic is thicker and sticks better, which gives 10x better cleaning versus bleach and kills germs. Oh, wow. You can now see that Hapic is better than bleach. Five questions with Ini. <laughs> Hi guys, Ine. Your skin is really glowing. What species soap do you use? It's glowing because it's healthy. I use a soap that keeps my skin soft and protected from germs. But Ine, the beauty soaps I know don't give germ protection. Dental skincare does. It combines dental's protection with argan oil to protect my skin. Gives me two times moisturization with a beautiful fragrance. Beautiful skin is germ-free skin. If you want to become something, become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your family from germs. When Dittol is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected.
Stay ahead with the biggest news stories. Go beyond the news headlines. Experience impactful investigations. Enjoy resourceful news coverage in real time. TV News at 7 and TV News at 10 p.m. Live every day on this channel. TV News. First with breaking news. as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories, we tell the news from every perspective, covering every human angle. I am Veronica, bringing you the news you would want to watch. Sometimes, it's the story that calls. At other times, the people just want to be heard. Their voices were echoing through time itself. If the, the tide is high, everybody run for safety. Their tears leave a sweet star taste for all their demands. A familiar call beckoning for change. In our world, no one expects a disaster to happen. But when it does, we'll be there to exit all sides, from the east to the west, north and south. Committee firm will examine the audits and challenges to economic development, as well as issues yearning for government intervention. Watch fresh episodes of Community Forum on Sundays by 9.30 p.m. only on TV News. At TV News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TV News, first with breaking news. Journalist Sanyas, I am Esther Mopariola. Today on the program, EFCC presents the witness who claimed he collects $3 million on behalf of Godwin Emefiele, a former CBN governor's trial for $4.5 billion and $2.8 billion, billion pounds rather, fraud gets underway. And Ten years after, 21 Chibok girls return with 34 children of 48 parents die of trauma. And later on the show, nationwide blackout again as the national grid collapses twice in one month. I will be hanging out with Baba Jide Kolade Osisoju and Mujib Jamu. Join us hang out starts now. Well, let's begin with the war against corruption and some funny but sad stories that come with it. The immediate past accountant general of the Federation, Ahmed Idri, said he thought he would not be prosecuted over alleged 109 billion naira fraud, which he's been tried along with the others. Idri said he decided to cooperate with investigators from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and provide them with the information they wanted to ease their investigation with the belief that he wouldn't be prosecuted. Okay, well, let's begin with you on this matter because when we look at this, you, one will wonder what exactly is wrong or what you think he was thinking, perhaps. Because he also alleged that the EFCC had assured him that he wouldn't be subjected to any trial if he gave details that would indicate the common ministers of finance and of course the government. What are your thoughts on this? Well, um, the EFCC has he has already admitted to some of the uh, charges against him. Because I don't know how an adult, a grown man, will say that he was misled. He did not put a man to your head. You have no excuse. If they made a promise to you, 
Azume would tell. That they made a promise to him that they, if he confessed, that he would not be prosecuted. Once his, uh, the information was not obtained under duress, mm. whatever he has said is of value to not just the prosecution, but to the rest of us, because we are interested in the truth. So a fully grown man saying, oh, I was misled to say the things that I said because I thought that by cooperating, I would not be put on trial. I mean, it's, it's a very big shame. And he should really be ashamed of himself for even saying that. That cannot be an uh, alibi. Did you commit the offense? At this stage, he cannot deny that he committed the offense because it's clear some admissions have already been made by him. So the job of the SEC is to go ahead and establish fully mm. the admission and do their best to prosecute this matter. And, and let's, let's put it behind us in, in, in record time. That's what we want to see. You know, it's a lot of money that we are talking about here. A lot of bribes here and there and all that. So it's a lot of money. You cannot have a person that the former president trusted so much that he extended his stay only to be um, involved in this kind of uh, criminal uh, uh, fraudulent acts using companies, different companies linked to family members and associates of his to launder. Uh, more than 80 billion naira. I mean, it's, it's um, as a case of diversion of 80 billion and other comments. Somebody even told me some things that I can't see on air. <laughs> but it's ridiculous to say, ah, I thought they would not put me on trial. That was why I, I, I opened up. I admitted to mm. some of the crimes. Ah, did you get into a contractual agreement with them that if I speak the truth, if I explain just how culpable I am, I will not be put on trial. There is no agreement reached. Nobody even gets into such an agreement. Nobody will put it in writing. So this is music to our ears. We are not interested in this. Face your trial. Let's see that case come to fruition. Right. If they have to jail him, let's see him go to jail. It will be good for our nation when we punish wrongdoing yes. in this manner. Right. And high-profile people, people that emirs are giving traditional titles to, if we punish them, people will now say, yes, in Nigeria, our attitude to crime and justice has changed. We are not punishing ordinary people anymore, alone anymore. We punish the heavy hitters, the big people, the politically exposed big people. We are not just sentencing Yahoo boys to jail. We are punishing big people. We are jailing big people. I want us to get to that stage in my country. There are countries where even former presidents are jailed. You know? So let, for corruption, and all, let's begin to do that in Nigeria. And if we must make an example of Idris, so be it. We are not interested in the stories. Right. MJ, how would you react to this, and what are your expectations? Yes. <clears throat> um, with the de developments under the new EFC chairman, Ola Olu, Olukoyede, I think we are beginning to see a new EFCC who is working the way they are supposed to be working. Um, this Ahmed Idris character um, already agreed to return 13.2 billion naira. Now his lawyer came, Chris uh, Ushe San. To say that uh, mm -hmm. uh, he was forced, no, not forced. That, that he, was, he was hoodwinked mm -hmm. to make those confessional statements. I mean, who, who, who does that? Now, these are hard evidence that the government, the, uh, the EFCC, has against you. So, and I think um, out some of these guys, you understand that the EFCC under it's not the EFC, not the same EFCC 
that we had under Rashid Bawa. Where, I mean, in fact, the, the EFCC will even mess up the case with the kind of... Um, on their own. On their own, they will mess up the case. But here, you can see how they are being methodical. Uh, with, I mean, they issued a statement yesterday on the better uh, do and humanitarian matter, stating facts of the matter. On the Sunday, they issued a statement. So, Ahmed Idris, it is only government witnesses who come to witness against you that could be promised a soft landing for being a good witness, not the main culprit. Right. I mean, that, that issue, you should understand that. I mean, how, how on earth can you come to say uh, because uh, uh, you, you have uh, made some confessional statements, so mm. uh, you, you, you thought you won't be prosecuted? Mm. Of course, the ESUC just issued a statement that was, as I was coming in that there was nowhere they promised him that if you make confessional statements, that you will not be prosecuted. Mm. Who does? Can you imagine who does? the lawyer? His lawyer is saying that he's objecting to the admissibility of the evidence. Of the evidence, yes. The, on what basis? On what basis? Not on the basis of it being extracted under duress. Under duress. Mm. He didn't say they put a gun to his head. To his head. These to are make statements those confessions. You, you made. He's saying they hoodwinked him. Yeah. Hoodwinked us in what now? <laughs> I mean, there are new things that I'm hearing in our country. Mm. Well, uh, uh, real you know, surreal situations that we are facing. I, I'm, this is the first time we are in this kind of. No, thing. no, the, law, the, the man that somebody was hoodwinked. And the lawyer is any. To say his, the truth. The lawyer is any his pay. <laughs> In the the lawyer is move on to our next issue of discussion because you know the matter can really be dicey, seeing that situation, you know how it's being handled. But let's quickly hope that this matter gets treated accurately I'm as going well. I'm to hoodwink you. <laughs> Make some confessions. you go home today. <laughs> All right, let's quickly move on to our next discussion where the trial of former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emifile, has commenced in earnest with charges relating to alleged procurement fraud of $4.5 billion and £2.8 billion. Pounds. A prosecution witness, Mondi Osazua, narrated to Justice Rahman Ushudi of the Lagos State Special Offenses Court how Emifile directed him to collect three million dollars in cash Osazua, an employee of the cbn also told the court that he collected the money from a businessman on behalf of emir Fili. bko the testimony of Osazua also revealed some you know revelations that the highest money he collected from mr bifili was about one million dollars in cash all the money and he never took according to him and never took anything out of the money what do you make of all these revelations? I'm not surprised because uh, the CBN under Emefili was so badly run. Emefili can go around with king size Bibles, but it doesn't take away the fact that. He ran the CBN in a very responsible manner. Mm -hmm. That's why I say without equivocation that is the worst CBN governor in our history. So many things happened. So many things. And on top of it all, you that you are as clean as a sewage pit, you are the one who is now punishing Nigerians with... Um, Naira or the painting. <laughs> politically instigated, politically motivated Naira repainting that cost the lives of our people, that destroyed small scale businesses. Many people have not recovered as we speak. Look at the interventions, CBN getting involved in things that we shouldn't be bothered about. Uncle Borrow's program, where people took loans using fake uh, cooperatives to access loans and they never paid back. Go and look at the record, the percentage of people that paid back to tell you that the whole scheme was a failure. And to tell you, to explain in bold relief to you that it was such a massive failure. The intervention was meant to drive down prices of food, cassava, rice. Greens. 
and the like. You know, instead of driving down rice price, you're going to go sky high. You're going to go sky high. So that is the biggest evidence that it was such a failure because the goal was to stimulate production, mm -hmm. which would then lead to so falling prices. Yes, we never experienced that. In fact, rice went to record high prices under this immediate of a man. If we look at some of the charges that they brought against him. About 26 charges. You said he allocated forex mm. of um, 2 billion 136 391,737 without bid. No competitive bid, nothing. Corruptly received $26 million from NIPCO. Corruptly received seven million seven hundred and twenty from uh, Raja Punjab on account of Forex to his employer. Conferred corrupt advantage on his associate, Limelight Multidimensional Services Limited, to the tune of nine hundred billion naira. There are others that Majid will also uh, throw some light on because he's been doing some research on Nemefili. <laughs> he has not even had sleep for this. <laughs> been doing some research. <clears throat> you know. um, I'm sure if you ask him where Nemefili bought his king size Bible, he will be able to tell us. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> really, do you have an insight on that? <laughs> no, no, no. He, he got it. He got it from some of those uh, fake quote-unquote pastors who, who assured him that nothing will happen as long as he could clutch on to that. I mean, even Pastor um, Apostle Suleiman said that that prayer Bible mm -hmm. is bigger than the one they, yeah, they are the using. conventional pastors. Uh, uh, oh, really? Uh, yes, yes, he said so. <laughs> said Those of them, even chartered pastors, <laughs> chartered pastors, <laughs> yes. they are not using They don't use that king-size Bible. Very big, yes. very embarrassing. You see, now jokes apart, um, one would expect that a CBN governor mm -hmm. will be conservative. Um, any CBN governor in Nigeria is number two in the hierarchy of the board of the EFCC. Right. By, by the statute that incorporated the law setting up the EFCC. The, when, after the EFCC chairman, the number two on the board is the CBN governor. So, he is quite aware of this. He sits on the board of the EFCC and look at the kind of things he made. No, even before he was removed, by the moment he started that uh, Naira colony, we said it on this program that this guy is heading in a very, very negative direction, that he will emerge as the worst CBN governor in office in Nigeria. While he was still in office, we said it on this program. Because you can imagine... Time when some of our deluded colleagues uh, yes, were siding with him. Were, were siding with him. Mm. How, can you imagine a CBN governor who, who sits on the uh, treasury of the entity called Nigeria mm. also eyeing a presidential uh, uh, post? Mm. To the extent that, that we thought some people paid that money for him, but when he had to go to court, that they should allow him hold the position of CBN mm. and also allow him yes. contest as a presidential aspirant. On well, that what an infantry. He bought more than 2,000 campaign vehicles branded, ready, set to go. Now we can see where this money mm. are coming from. Yes. And I think the EFCC should go further by unveiling who is behind this Raja Punjab right. that has been very, very recording. $6.2 million, $7.7 .7 million cash mm -hmm. from this one. You know what they do? Um, why Emi uh, would claim that he was uh, using our foreign reserves to defend the Naira. They were doing between $200 million uh, on a weekly basis. So, what they normally do is, if we allocate the $200 million to the likes of these Raja Punjabs, they will sell at the official rate then of probably 
they will buy from the CBN at 350 yeah, yeah. Naira, which was official rate. Mm -hmm. These characters, the Nipkos and the Raja Punjabs of this world, will now sell to the black market at about 500. So without lifting a finger, on $200 million, mm -hmm. they have made I mean, an average of 200 Naira per dollar. Multiply that by $200 million. And this is something they do on a weekly basis. So his own, they will come back and give him through Monday or Sasuna. Mm -hmm. in that's dollars. what the FCC said. That's, that, that's what the yeah, EFCC uh -huh. said, because, yeah. you, because they didn't give him your presence. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, uh, yes, but it's part of our Osasuna, allegation, actually. Osasuna yeah. was in court. EFCC wrote this. Mm. I mean, and Osasuna was in court where the reporters were there. So, these kind of things we've, we've been hearing. There is all kinds of yes. allegations of bribe collection. Bribe so collection. many in these charges. To uh, the extent that the wife and the brothers have been declared, were also mentioned, yeah, were yes. mentioned and declared wanted. Wanted. It was so bracing with the way he was running the CBN as if it's, it's a, a family. No, that's 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 what the EFC is uh, uh, on the screen now. You can right. see they said they conferred corrupt advantage on his associate, as Comex Support Services Limited, to the tune of 151 billion. Wow. Um, he corruptly received six million three twenty. Um, dollars from so, Raja, Raja Punjab, Punjab on account of Forex to his employer. Yeah. He corruptly received $200,000 from Source Computer Limited as kickback for contract award. Abuse, then, uh, abuse of office by special allocation of Forex to the tune of $1,769,000 you know, uh, 254. Mm. Well, I must say that all these are allegations, like you rightly pointed out, you know, from the EFCC, because according to the courts, he's still innocent until proven guilty. Mm. So I have not said this. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What we can mm. say is that he's the worst CBN governor in history. There is, the court does not need yeah. to say that he's not the worst. It is my opinion. Yeah. And many people hold that opinion. Right. And when you see some of the changes being done, because the, the CBN is a regulator for God's sake. To regulate even the banks mm -hmm. was difficult for him to do. And that only happens if you two, if you don't have integrity. How do you regulate them? We never knew that the banks had more than seven billion in their, in their yeah, um, seven billion dollars. Yes, seven billion dollars in their, their vaults. vaults, and we are saying we don't have enough uh, uh, forex, forex yeah. to supply uh, the foreign exchange market. It took Cardoso to say, "I'm giving you 48 hours. You must sell what you have." When Cardoso said, "We are moving into a strong regulatory environment," mm -hmm. when he told the Senate, they thought he was joking. You can see some of what is getting them to do now. You cannot take a loan in Naira terms and use the dollar. foreign dollar exchange to, collar, to, to coll collateralize. collateralize it. No. All of, all of those measures bringing sanity into the sector. He came, he inherited more than 6,000 um, um, Bureau de Change okay. operators. He sent packing about a... Uh, no, they have only about 1,500 or so left. Yeah. Out of over 6,000. Hmm. Sent packing. More than, than 4,000, yes. Even if I was reading Premium Times, where they said some of the Brood Exchange uh, operators registered their Brood Exchange outfits with funny names like Rice and Beans Brood Exchange. Yeah, we have a lot of them. We and see, they were, giving, and they were making them, they are giving them, it's, 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 it's very funny. Yeah, indeed. It, it's, it can be really appalling. But when we look, talk about this issue...